Let's stop my security cam. Shut up, Ben CD. Shut up, Ben. I get shut up, Ben. I'm shut up, Ben. I use my video from people. Make sure I don't get that many views. I'm live on a channel that has uh, 900 something subscribers. And I have zero viewers, and I have had zero viewers click the like since I started. That's a shadow banning, in effect. Also known as a dove.
Hello, man. I just saw your comment there. Good to see you, man. I'm wearing my Eskimo suit today. I won't be checking the chat all the time, but I'll take a peek now and then. This is uh, This is the uh, corner store. So if you hear me talk about the corner store in my live streams, that's the corner store in question. It's called uh, Esplanade and Sleep, also known as Time. And there's a bakery on the right side here. 
You've seen that before. I'm walking at a relaxed pace now. I'm not in a rush. It's a great sky today. Looks a little bit similar to the sky, so where you are, towards the end of our uh, live stream, you're showing the backyard. Notice how I'm not hyperadrenalized and affected by the cortisol PTSD stress factor when I go outside. I mean, there used to be a time where the problem was getting to me, the uh, psychological work. I'm not saying it never happens that I get worked up when I'm outside because of the targeting, the provocations. But the uh, frequency and intensity has definitely decreased. I Meaning it uh, happens less often that I get worked up. And if I do, typically it's less worked up than what it used to be. I still didn't eat. Uh, during my life in towards the end when you left, I was about to cook. I decided to abort that plan and uh, Extend my fast. Sixteen twelve.
and I'm back. I had to remove my screen cover to be able to see the uh, slider bar with just the brightness. I put it way down to conserve battery. It makes the phone battery last longer. Sometimes too much now like this. And that was enough this time. I have this screen cover. It's very good. I can recommend this. They don't have it for all phones. It's a TPU 360 silicon TPU cover. TPU. And it saved my phone many times. I mean, I've walked like this, dropped on the asphalt, hasn't broken. And it's uh, 360. I mean, there's one for the front, one for the back. It covers the front, back, and the sides. On top of the uh, glue on holding glass that I have on my full screen itself. I have a new phone. I didn't receive it yet, but it's been old. Sixteen seventeen, and I have arrived downtown. Close to the town square is to my left. Gotta get a paper napkin. These are some of the things that I've been with me the time I go outside. One of these paper napkins. I bring curry soft wipes. I brought disposable gloves. Good to have. Three liposomal varmi sieve sachets. And these are the curry soft wipes. Uh, I got what I call a neck cold two days ago, I think it was. And I recovered very quickly the day after I did that workout. And this happens sometimes. Sometimes I fall asleep with my plate carrier on, uh, body armor, and it traps heat and moisture on my chest. And how it works is, during night, the uh, air temperature drops, you're sweating, and the uh, moisture doesn't evaporate because it's trapped behind on your chest if you sleep like this it is trapped under there and it is cold air temperature and liquid is very efficient at transferring heat so it rapidly it cools your chest down your chest cavity and uh you wake up coughing there'll be a chest cold and uh the other day i thought i was wearing my uh plate carrier which i don't do out of fear or paranoia uh i like wearing it and one of the things it does, I see people wearing weight vests to make themselves stronger. So I walk around with a vest with like sand in it, small sandbags or steel bars or something to make themselves stronger by carrying this extra weight around all the time. So this is like killing two birds with one stone. It's a weighted vest and it's also gives protection against bullets. So if I'm going to carry something to add weight, Obviously, it's, it's better to wear something that also protects against bullets. If you're going to be carrying something anyway. Um. <laughs> anyway, I think it's two days ago. I had a plate carry on. I had been carrying it uh, daytime. And I was uh, going to bed. And I thought, oh, remind myself. I have to take that off before I go to bed. Because it's happened before I go to sleep with it. And then I wake up coughing the next morning like a chest cold. Okay. And you typically, I stop making all the vitamin C and I kick the cold before the day is over, is how I feel. Um, and I thought about that. So I took it off and then I went to bed. And I forgot to take off my uh, neck warmer, like this thing I have around my neck. So I got a neck cold instead of a chest cold. I dodged the chest cold and got a neck cold instead. And I woke up coughing with a persistent cough, ceaseless cough. And I felt, put my finger, sure enough, it was like drenched with sweat cold sweat uh and i saw the mega dose vitamin c commenced oral administration of sodium ascorbate and uh I, I got back to normal quickly It's a dog crane there. I'm gonna check if the uh, Salvation Army store is open. 
they have a Salvation Army store. It's a charity, which means they uh, they sell you second-hand items. And you can find some vintage organs in there. Like a 1960s blender or something like this. And clothes. And I think that a lot of the things that they get, a good portion of it, is maybe a uh, old couple is living together and then one of them die and there's like things left over <coughs> and like the estate will donate to charity their stuff some of it all of it there's a restaurant there I've been alive for 26 minutes. It's 16.22. Looks like this is a light rain. Yes, there is. It's beginning to rain now. They have a ashtray all the way over there. I'll be our back.
and I'm back. Uh, what are you asking about? What is what? I don't know when you wrote the comment. I'm gonna go into the salvation store. They have a uh, an optician here. They have a toilet, public toilet, and they have uh, Anderson's home electronics, cameras, computers, printers, and accessories, uh, and uh, salon miracle, miracle. I'm gonna go to the second hand store. Uh -huh. Hur länge är ni uppe på vår dagar? 25. Fem, okej. Okay. This strong smell of some kind of cleaning chemical, like freshly spayed AJ or something. Jackson so Cadillac Utility Dulce Tea. Funny, they have a beautiful glass. That's a lot of That looks like a champagne glass. Thank you, babe. And look at find the look at glasses. The problem is, uh, if I buy something like that, a decorative uh, fine glass, I have to be careful with it in transport because it can break. This is a cool glass. Which one you like, honey? This you can use for vitamin C water if you want. Five gram dose vitamin C. It's a bit more sturdy. I think I might buy them. I think if I look at what they have, they move that to see. Sorry. This one is cute. I think you like this. I think you will like this. It has some lion. Beautiful decoration. It has a knight and a cute cat. See? This is from a Swedish fairy tale, I think. I had to wipe the camera as it looks a little bit smudged. I do that outside. Okay. I think I might put a bigger glass here. They have another one with bubbles in it. And they have one that's frosted. A couple of main
That would be a good all round glass from seawater if you just put coal from it. We have big ones too. These, if you drop them, they're done for. I like glasses that have a good chance of surviving if you drop them from waist height. This one is also beautiful. But I feel like it's easy to drop it. To put it on a table. It's like top heavy. It's beautiful, but... Do you mean this one? Huh? Is this what you mean? Do you mean this? Looks like flower leaves. I like this one too. I'm going to buy that one. I think it's only one dollar now. I want to buy one. Like maybe this big one. They have coffee. I'm going to stay. No, let's not get greedy. Jag ställer den här så länge jag rullar att jag tar den här rullen och tittar på den där grejen. Ja, tack. I have whole kidneys.
No thank you, thank you for buying this. One dollar. This one, three dollars. This one, three dollars. Brown. White one, one dollar. Can use to, I can use this to put my ring inside of something. Or a candle, I think it's a candle. What do you think? Think I should buy it or not? Coffee cup, espresso cup, and this I think is one dollar. The video is not as clear as it could be. I have a smudge. I'm gonna wipe that when I get outside. It's about a dollar. I don't know if it's actual leaf gold or if it's imitation. But it's cold color. Small coffee cup, delicate. Espresso cup. I think this would be called an espresso cup. I'm not sure. But it looks like it's made for hot liquids. Yes, and it uh, supports poor people. It's a charity. Now, I haven't looked into it, how it runs, okay? But uh, supposedly, the part of the proceeds go to uh, help people, possibly to send some money to the Ukrainians or something like this. Like children's hospital, stuff like this. They're not going to like buy 84 functions and all like this. It's going to be a like, medical. If, if they have something, I would guess right. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. P.S. Wise as serpents and as harmless as doves is a Bible verse. The Holy Spirit in the Bible is likened unto a dove. Uh, when John baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, lighted upon him as a dove. Okay, a dove is a symbol for peace. He make himself a twenty-one new man, slain the enmity thereby. Um, a dove is symbolically rich in Christianity. It is very symbolically rich. Um, Dove symbolize the Holy Spirit, and also uh, being non-toxic from a spiritual perspective, meaning as harmless as a dove, non-abusive. Okay, it doesn't mean turn the other cheek, somebody attacks you, you're not allowed to punch back, somebody, somebody jumps in the street, that's not what that means. But uh, like they're harmless, you know, you're not out to harm people, you're out doing good in the world as a Christian. Okay. So yeah, I like it. I caught my one dollar and I tried to use it as a holder for a ring for uh, one of these uh, skinny candles. I mean, not the big ones, but like a long, thin candle. I think that could be what it is, like a candle ring. So I'm gonna buy this and I'm not gonna get caught there. 
Lord bin helak wat 10 minutes they have a reading light here. I guess it's LED. Yeah, triple LED. They have books. They have DVDs, but don't have a DVD player. And it's, it's a sign in Swedish saying, what we do not have today, we may have tomorrow. Or might. <laughs> you want to buy it? Okay. You're doing uh, window shopping. You're forced to. Even if you want to buy something, you can't. So it's enforced window shopping mode for, for you. I'm happy you like to see this. I'm glad. Okay. They have books here. No, I don't buy books because I'm allergic and people might have been wearing cologne flipping through their bedtime reading books and things like this. And um, it's hard to relax and read a book if you're reacting allergically to it. So that's one of the things I don't buy. Okay, don't pull it off. Well, the fan is there. Yeah, there's no price for it. Oh, okay. I thought it was 10. I marked the fan, so it's even better. Have you had any... Have you had any... ...inslag? What did you say? Yeah, no inslag. Yeah, yeah. It's 15 kronor for both. You pay for the contact. Yeah. Det blir bara dinningspapper, inget dinningspapper. Nej, det är bra. Du kan bara hålla på. Det är bra. Jag får fan göra den här då. Ja, tack så mycket. Gör ni någonting som stöttar ni ut på China? Eller är det här i världens barn? Ja. Jag var nyfiken på det. Ja, det var nyfiken på det. Förra året så har jag fått 150 000. Ja, det var inte det. Jag sa ju att du kan komma med det. Jag har sagt att det var ganska mycket. Det var ju inte det. Så, tack så mycket. Ja, det var ju inte det. If uh, you move to me in the future, God willing, uh, maybe we can go ahead together sometime. But I'm gonna have you in a full hazmat suit and body armor, an EOD explosive ordnance disposal suit, and like six layers of Kevlar. <laughs> I'm joking. Full hazmat suit and respirator. Okay. We're gonna have a cigarette. It's raining. There's a light rain, which I like. I didn't. I forgot to. Uh, I didn't think of uh, spraying my cold my skin with vitamin C water before I left. If I do that, my skin is less sensitive to things I'm allergic to. So a lot of times, due to allergies, I like when it rains because moist, humid air and rain droplets falling through the sky will trap uh, dust particles and other things. Meaning, if you would spray perfume, the rain and the humid air will kind of interfere with its spreading. Um, humid air, rain is good if you have allergies in general. If that's pollen, dogs, cats, perfume, in general, rain is good. I like rain. And I will take a picture of that when I come home, like a higher quality picture. As I noticed when I was showing you the items, looking at the screen, at the mirror, what I, I'm seeing what the camera is seeing, only like a thumb, a stamp sized area. But I could see that it was unclear, a little bit, a smudge on it, which is the come full circle earlier when I was in that corner, I showed what I have in my box on being outside. Liposomal, vitamin C, carousel wipes, paper napkins, uh, 
and for situations like this, it's really good to have. I can get this cutter saw wipe, roll it up, get a little bit of a point on it, rotate it, and I think it looks clear now. Get the back cam while I'm at it. Okay. But yeah, I'm glad you like to see it. <coughs> uh, I shall transport myself in a bipedal manner onto the benches, residing by the tree. And I shall be seated and rest myself, but for a moment. Then I shall proceed to go forth and enter into the uh, Holy of Holies of the supermarket, the innermost parts thereof. And I shall inquire as to what mercantile they have available. <laughs> as through the uh, thing that this is the building. The building, constructing. This is a construction site. As you might have been able to guess from seeing it. And it's uh, fenced in. Obviously, because if you wouldn't, there would be kids running into getting hurt and dogs, pets running in there and people stealing stuff. And you need to lay down boundaries in life. Because if you don't, opportunistic people will capitalize on the lack of boundaries. So the fence is what's called a boundary. A physical bond. This is the uh, supermarket. This is the town square. Uxulusen town square. That's a, a plasma screen, LCD, LED, whatever it is. I don't know. But it's a display and this bus time. So let's go look at it. I'm curious. And you can see the local time, and my time is right, 16.52. How long have I been lying? 57 minutes. And I'm at 74% battery, so... <laughs> Unless I take too much, I drop my glasses. Unless I take too much time. Unless it take too much time, I should be good. Once it starts getting down to 20, 25, I don't know, it's time to uh, hurry up a little bit. If I'm not hurrying up at the moment. So this is the entrance to the supermarket. And the way that I recorded last time, uh, I figured out ways to record more or less discreetly. Meaning it's not illegal to film, and I wouldn't be concerned about openly filming. Like if I had a professional big camera, I would around with it or something like this. But uh, I prefer to do it discreetly. So it's like right now I look like a guy on, on a video call. And then when I uh, turn the camera around, we see the landscape mode. It's me holding the phone down like this. Like, think that the glass is on my phone. And then you have the camera here. And I'm holding the phone to my side like this. And then I can turn my body to uh, change where it goes. Now the rain is, uh, it, it, the rain, the amount of rain coming down is increasing. There's more rain now. Deploying my uh, Eskimo hoodie here.
I will go back home soon, babe. Okay, babe. I was talking to a pamphleteer uh, outside, and I took his note. Actually, I've been on golf perspective before. I know how frustrating it is if people take it and then they throw it away. And I, I wouldn't take it if I was on golf, but I was actually kind of interested in the topic because pam pamphlet. It made about uh, sixty seconds of small talk, then I went. I got this quote. Here they have a lunch buffet. Uh, I have initiated a high cup here, which means I can eat food that I can't normally eat. Which is a little bit pattern breaking. And interesting. So I'll see what I'll buy. Nothing with sugar. I mean, even in my high cup here, it's not like a sheet here, really. Because I don't eat sugar, I don't eat gluten. I stick to certain rules. I have certain rules. No sugar, no gluten. Low to no lactose. I'm going to buy some high carb food here. More tortillas. Nacho chips. Cheese. I don't like sunflower. But these are cheap. These are big bags. Thank you. 
two dollars. Full flower palm oil. Not too happy about that. I don't like palm oil. Cheese powder. I might buy one. Then I better fight up that gluten in there. Palm oil is not good. But I'm, I'm buying this. Yeah, babe. I don't know if you're still watching if you took a shower. This is the uh, fresh cheese. That's the word for fresh cheese in Swedish. That's the word for dessert cheese in Swedish. This is a uh, ready food, ready to eat food. Uh, fresh soup, it says there. Salads, you might be able to guess that, similar to the English word. Pizza kits, self explanatory, to speak English. What I want to show you, oh, welcome back. What I want to show you is the uh, goat milk. I know you like goat milk. I've talked to we before, and uh, obviously and she said i like goat milk <laughs> okay i don't know why i think that's cute and sweet when she says she likes goat i like goat milk uh so i'm trying to find the goat cheese so i can show you they have a lot of different cheeses here this is a well-stocked supermarket they have all kinds of stuff like what 50 different types of uh cheeses here in this house and somewhere here they have goat cheese Saint Agul, intense and creamy in a perfect balance. Uh, this is what's called blue cheese, mold cheese. It's a little bit pricey. I'm looking for something else cheaper. Old Amsterdam, Cathedral City, English cheddar. These are pricey cheeses. If I don't find something cheap, I'm not going to get it. Chevre. Oh, this is goat milk cheese. This, that, that's goat milk cheese. Chevre. It's uh, four dollars. Before they had a special price cheese, cheap down in the right corner here. Like I think it was their own brand, like El Chico uh, cheese. That's seventy-four crowns, and that's from fifty-three crowns. It's a little bit uh, pricey for me. Too much to spend on cheese. So the one crowns for the mold cheese, blue cheese, might not be too bad. Three dollars. Yeah, they don't have a special price, special price cheese anymore. Yeah, they have spreadable cheeses. I'm going to buy a uh, ready cooked chicken, possibly, but they raised the price to eight dollars. I don't like that. What about here? Yeah, prices have gone up. I don't not too happy about that. Here they have chicken, club, uh, thin ribs, three dollars. I like. Like this, 
22 pounds. Doesn't tell you how many cups. Salt, paprika, spices, grape sugar, stored sugar. I like it all natural. Chicken meat only. And if I want to spice it up, I can do it myself. Here they have Asian steamed buns. Maybe, I don't know if it is in Thailand, if it's like a Chinese thing. Big dumplings. Here they have salmon. Pricey. Price have gone up. Uh, 53 pounds. Yeah. You know what, I'm gonna buy some meat. Real chicken. Beautiful crumbs. Twenty three crumbs. Thirty. Actually, I'm going to. Uh, place this chicken. And I got cheap ones instead. I bought one of the salamis, one of the medwursts, one of the cognac medwursts. Dried ham. Air dried ham, 25 pounds. Pepperoni. Gold salami. Garlic salami. Wet hundred fifty grams. Sorry, four pounds. I'm gonna check there's no gluten in there. Sometimes gluten will hide in things you don't expect. 
Okay. Here they have well, thirty crumbs, three dollars. Prosciutto, antipasto. Prosciutto, antipasto. It's me, Mario. Uh, which one is that? Antipasto. Crudo, di Parma, Milano. Maybe they finished. Maybe they got water. Prosciutto Parma. It's not a lot of food cool for your money, so. Antipasto Beretta, 180 grams. Beretta is an Italian firearms company. Uh, they produce the Beretta 92 FS 9x19 millimeter handgun. It's a classic. You've seen a lot of 90s era Hollywood movies. Uh, so Beretta is a firearms company, Italian, and it's apparently also another family or company name that produce food. Alrighty, I'm gonna go over here, don't get caught. Sometimes I get lost, like I lose track of time. Now, I could tempt you, but I could show you these sweets here. I'm not gonna be tempted, I can resist, I quit sugar and sugar free. 2023 didn't eat any sweets or treats, I decided to do 2022, I've been sticking to it. And I can stand here all day and I'm not gonna be tempted. If I'm tempted, I trust my ability to hold myself back. But I, if I show you these sweets, I don't want you to. I know you like to see that, but I know maybe you'll get hungry for sweets. But you're an adult, so these are the uh, sweets here, muffins and uh, sweets, donuts, uh, plain donut you might call it, uh, chocolate coated donut, monk green vanilla, uh, luxury donut, salted caramel. Okay, donut, smarty party, apple pie, donut, dark caramel. They have all these flavors. So, and here they have these buns. Muffins and buns. Here they have cakes. A princess cake is called a princess cake. And some other delicacies. They look beautiful. They like works of art. Like this cake here. But uh, appearances can be deceiving. Some things that look sweet can be toxic. Uh, fudge, three dollars. So here they have egg noodles. They got egg noodles, but there's more wheat flour than uh, egg. So we have egg no. I'm gonna get some of this. This is sourdough. This is one of my favorite bread. It's sourdough. Sourdough crisp bread. It's five dollars. Gluten free sourdough crisp bread. Semper. Crisp bread with sourdough. This will be a tr what I consider a treat. This special gluten free bread. Rice bread. Gonna get one of those.
This is the gluten-free bread aisle. Corn breads. This is something that might be uh, interesting for people not Swedish. Uh, in Sweden, hard bread is a traditional food item. Like, that's what the Vikings would eat. Okay. Hard breads, knäckebröd. It's like one of the most Swedish or Swedish uh, things you can have. So these are... Actually, I remember I made a live stream about this. Some of the supplies that, that Sweden, Swedish government sent to... Wow, that's loud. Uh, some things the Swedish government sent to Ukrainians were MREs, and they sent these Vasa brand uh, hard bread packs to the Ukrainians. That was part of what the Swedish sent as support. They also sent uh, body armor, helmets, 84 rocket launchers, which are called P-86, uh, Panzer Scott 86. And uh, what else did they say? Body armor, helmets, uh, 84s, and some of these type of hard breads. And they have all kinds of different types of hard breads here. Lexan, that's one brand. Vasa is a big one. And they have all these different types. Now, these are not gluten free. The gluten free aisle is here to my left. This is gluten free bread. Um, so I bought the, uh, that one. Saudo. This is, uh, old times, traditional old time thin bread. Hard bread. And the big round ones. You can find these big ones there. They would, people would make them and they would have like a broom handle in the roof and they would hang them up in the roof. These wheels here. And they had the same one cut. If you uh, need to go somewhere in Thailand, you get two of these. And you can, uh, yeah, it's not even good. Uh, Thai taxes are called tuk tuk. Okay. Sesame and sea salt, but these are not gluten free, as I said. All right. Here they have a uh, well packaged poison. Uh, $15 for this Antonberg uh, sweets. Part of the success in staying off sugar is how I talk to myself. So I don't look at uh, sugar as a happy, good times thing. I remember as a child, I saw, like trigger, you go into the store, you see stuff, oh, I used to eat this candy as a child, stuff like this. Or like, oh, sweet. No, it's like poison. Okay, I see sugar, and I go, oh, yeah, there's some poison there. This is poison, see. Uh, Toxic addictive drugs. <laughs> okay, it's like it's like you're you're reminding yourself of what it is, and that it's not like it's like I get it to be so levels, but how you talk about things interferes, uh, influences how you uh, feel about things, you think about things, and your thoughts dictate your behavior. So if you go thinking about how how good sweets taste, and that's what you think about. If you think of folks in the supermarket, you go look at treats and you're thinking about you're having flashbacks to eating a chocolate or something like this. You think about how it feels, how good it feels to eat it. Like, you're more likely to uh, end up, ah, you know what, what the hell, I'm quitting sugar 2023, take a sheet period or something like this. But if you see it, you go, this oh, is God. this is poison, this is toxic, it's addictive, it's bad for your health. Uh, I think that's a good, good thing to remind yourself of. So, we shall proceed over here. Coca Cola looking real cute, reminiscing on my swing days. No coal. No carb company. They sell uh, energy drinks, BCA enriched, and other types, I think, with no carbs in them. This is the lactose free aisle. I'm going to buy uh, some. Butter, I already have this type of butter for cooking, lactose free. This is for, uh, it has a different consistency, it's easier, you get out of fridge, you can spread it on uh, bread and stuff. This you have to kind of heat it up a little bit, it's harder. Lactose free. 
seven dollars but it's a big pack so here we go Actually, I'm getting the small one. I'm going to mute myself because there's music playing in certain types of parts of the store. So I can mute myself voluntarily or if it picks it up the algorithm, I will have to go and mute the part where it's playing copyright only afterwards. So I'm going to mute myself for a while, but for a moment.
This is the secret medicine outlet in Dom Market, like a nightclub where you have to knock three times on the door to get in. You have to know it's there to find it. So back alley door, you knock 3.5 times, however you do that, and you let you know, okay? This is the secret pharmacy in the supermarket that most we still know that they have medicine hidden here. In plain sight, this is ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Right next to it, they have the second part of the medicinal water solution, bicarbonate, ascorbic acid, sodium bicarb. And then right here, the, the symbology is teaching, like the matrix code, doctor, something to do with medicine and health, Dr. Oetker brand bicarbonate. So you mix this with this thing that's right in close vicinity, ascorbic acid, you have a powerful healing medicinal solution. Uh, there. And I put it back in order. I have I buy kilo cans of it on Amazon, but I used to buy it. If I run out, I, I've gone here and bought it sometimes on the axis. It's 37 gram bags. And they have a reference to the blood atonement of Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of it. You can see the red color here. That's a reference to the blood atonement of Christ. This is the tomb that Christ was buried in, and a stone was rolled over it. After his blood atonement, he shed his blood. There was a stone rolled over, and then he rose again from the dead, and the stone was rolled away. So this is symbolically decoding the matrix. This is a hidden reference to uh, the finished work of Lord Jesus Christ, his healing work for man's souls. This is the Asian Isle, Korean stuff, Chinese, uh, Thai, and right here seems to be mostly Thai. I found this tomato juice can. This would be perfect for protein shakes and smoothies with the big opening to it. You don't need a funnel, and it looks like it's bigger than the other ones that I have.
Muito bom esse gol. Vem lá. Ah, jag tar en sån här Don Thomas cigarr och sen en kaffe tar med. Mission complete. Oh, this is quite a lot of stuff there. I bought a Don Tomas cigar. I started loving those. It's a poor man's cigar in my book. I mean, I'm not a rich guy. And uh, some of the things I bought today are kind of like treating myself. Meaning, if I would shop like this every time I went shopping, I wouldn't, uh, I would run out of money before the month or so. This is like, uh, uh, for example, the cheese, the cheese wheel. That's a little bit too pricey for normal consumption. And then the cigar and stuff like this. But what I like about the Don Tomas cigar, it's, uh, it's cheap. It's less than $7 for a big cigar. And it tastes great. And it's good tobacco. And uh, what I do, I mentioned that earlier today in one of my live streams. What I do, I buy the bulk of my tobacco. I handle cigarettes, if you watched my videos before. I buy uh, cans of rolling tobacco. So that's the biggest part, like eight, 95%, 95% plus of the total amount of tobacco. And then sometimes I buy cigar or cigarettes like now. I smoke it, I save the bud of it, like the last port, and then crumble it into the normal tobacco. And sometimes I buy commercial cigarettes, and not every cigarette, but I crumble some of those into uh, the tobacco mix, and I make my own custom, my special tobacco blend. I like smoking. I, I might even dare to say that I love smoking. And coffee. If you don't smoke, don't start. But I believe that smoking is good for me. Okay, That's a radical statement. I've been holding it back. I'm tired of pretending like it's not good for me to smoke cigarettes. Okay. I believe <laughs> it's good for me. Me, not you necessarily. I believe it's good for me to smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. Okay. Might not be for you. It takes a certain lifestyle and person for it to be uh, for you to dare to say it is good for you. It, it will be rare. There's a lot of things you gotta do and be. Now I'm not saying it's anything tobacco is good for you, but the good outweigh the bad for me. My brain not likes nicotine. I have read that. Uh, nicotine, one of the effects of nicotine is it lowers your sensitivity to sensory input for 30 minutes post-ingestion of nicotine. 
meaning you get less sensitive to uh, sensory stimuli if you smoke cigarettes or consume nicotine another way. And uh, once I learned that I have autism ADHD, it kind of clicked why I've been a guy who's mega dosing coffee and cigarettes for many years. It's been like a form of self-medication, you might say. Meaning I would rather uh, smoke a lot of cigarettes and drink a lot of coffee and then balance out the negative effects with supplementation, reduce the damage I'm taking by mega dosing antioxidants, then to uh, like try some Ritalin or something like this. It does have medicinal effects for me. Like it helps. And uh, I don't feel like it's, it's uh, hurting me a lot. I'm not saying smoking seriously good for you. You can't report it, you can report it but you're not going to win it. I'm saying that I believe that smoking is, helps me more. The end use experience, I feel like it does more good for me. Feel. Okay. I'm not saying cigarettes are good for you, they're bad for you. If you don't smoke, don't stop. Smoking may cause death, serious harm. Um, it's a PSA now. Smoking causes impotence. Erectile dysfunction in Swedish. Okay. Look at this guy. You don't want to be this guy. Gray, pale, bad posture, looking down on yourself, literally. Weak and sickly looking. This is how some smokers end up looking after smoking five, ten years. Okay. Smoking causes death, disease, suffering. Uh, Possibly responsible for the initiation of the nuclear war. Uh, no, the Ukraine war, not nuclear war. If it goes nuclear, it might be responsible for that. That's a joke. It's not a good, that's a good joke, but it's... Uh, okay. What's my point? My point is, I'm not saying smoke is good for you, but I like to smoke. And I feel like it does more good for me, personally, than bad. Okay, so I'm not going to be here all day. I bought a small coffee to go. I think it's a dollar or $1.5. dollar. And what I like, they have a plastic pitcher with water on a cooler there and a milk. I don't use milk. But when I pour out the coffee, it's piping hot. And I will have to like stand here and wait five minutes until it's cool enough to drink. Got to blow on it or... Either another thing you can do, you can fill it two thirds and it will cool down quicker. But if you have the cold water, you leave a little bit of space, you can pour cold water in there and it becomes ready to drink quicker. This is uh, Americano. Coffee, plain Americano coffee, as it's called. Now, this is Sweden, so it will be a uh, plain Swedish coffee. Without an O at the end of it. Yes, I understand you, babe. That's good. It's like an acquired taste. Smokers love the smell of cigarettes, tobacco, and in general. And non-smokers dislike it. You could say it's an acquired taste in smell. Okay, so let's go over here. I bought a lot of stuff for my high carb period today. I think I don't normally buy the uh, corn tortillas, high carb food, uh, cheese crunchers. Potato chips. <coughs> I like this here. It's got like a spongy feel to it. Feels like you're walking on clouds almost. This is not asphalt. This is some kind of rubber, I would guess. And if you take a few steps on it and then walk on the ground, the contrast, the difference makes the normal ground feel that much harder for the first 
20 steps maybe. This is the outside of the supermarket. You can see the bugle. I don't know if you can see it actually. But that's the Ica Quantum. That's the post office bugle logo. Which lets you know there's a post office inside. There's a Coast Guard rescue vessel there. I would assume. Because it's red. And what else would it be? A firefighting boat? Maybe it could be repurposed for that. Like a chopper. It can be fitted with different loadouts. Ground attack rule. Reconnaissance. Maybe it's like one of those things. It's like a workhorse. They can they can put some kind of pump on it and spray water. And they can also use it to pull. Well, I don't know. But it looks like a coast guard vessel. So this is a coastal town. Hence all the... Uh, seafaring symbology like this huge anchor here i think this might actually be a legit old-time anchor like 100 years old or something like this 150 AD. like I, I it looks like that it looks authentic it doesn't look like an imitation or like they took some wood then and, and worked it to make it look old it looks genuinely like an old anchor iron and that's a big anchor. If you look at it from a certain perspective, you can see a cross. So, lights on, they light up at night. 41% battery, gotta turn down my screen brightness a little bit. Alrighty. I'll take the road past the church. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Now, the Swedish church <coughs> is not doctrinally correct. It's some kind of Protestant, Lutheran, whatever. They do infant baptism. Uh, if somebody's like, Mike, is the Swedish church real Christianity or not? I don't know if to go. Why? What are some quick fire like things that quickly disprove them as being real Christians, like practicing real Christianity? Well, they marry homosexuals in that church. Uh, and here will be like the extreme example that happens now and then. They will have a female priest marrying homosexuals. Okay. Uh, so not only do they have Mary's, blessed the marriage, like marry homosexuals, but they have female priests. They marry homosexuals sometimes. And that would be like the worst of the worst I could mention, I guess. They uh, do infant baptism. Which is not going to hurt the child's soul or something like this. But it's pointless, basically. is what it is. And it's more kind of like a feel-good ceremony for the parents and family. And that's it, like Christmas, something like this. Like a holiday thing. Uh... But you know what? The symbology is there. So you can see we are Christian in symbology. The gold color cross there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. And is either because that or for that. He hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And herein is that condemnation. 
that light is coming to the world <laughs> and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And it goes on to speak about he that loveth the truth cometh to the light, he that doesn't, uh, doesn't, lest his deeds should be reproved. And that's a cross reference to Ephesians 5, in my view. Uh, whatsoever things are reproved or made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does make manifest is light. Maybe I'll get a copyright from Disney Hotstar after I get home. On the church belt. Okay. Disney Hotstar is taking over the world. They're doing aggressive acquisition. They're uh, claiming copyright on people's... The sound of pe water running out of people's faucets. People chopping onions. Disney Hotstar has got a copyright on it. Better watch out. The reason I say that is because I did a live stream the other day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Birds. I like birds. Files are there. God made the files are there after their kind. He made waterfowl. He made high flying birds, low flying birds, water living birds. And land leaving birds. Yeah, so my point is this. Uh, I don't hate the people like the Christians there. You're not supposed to hate people as a Christian. But uh, I'm not a fan of false religion. Okay. Because it doesn't get anybody saved. So, um, it does more harm and good to people's souls sometimes. Now, they will do good works a lot of time, churches. Um, like help people in physical need and things like this. Charities and donation drives and this and that. Which is uh, good. But, like spiritually, they're not servicing people the right way. This is... Uh, Escape room type place called Buddha Bori. And they have escape rooms here, kind of like a obstacle course where you can have... It is like school school here on, on a day out. And maybe like work groups and things like this. And it's some kind of a activity. And uh, this escape rooms and stuff. Welcome. Now, a lot of times it's easy to get into something and get out of it. So, if you don't get into the escape room, you won't have to uh, figure out a way to get out of it. Hello, oh, like. All right. These trees have been pruned, pruned, which uh, makes can make them grow faster. If you cut trees, that can speed up growth 
and make the tree produce more fruit. Meaning if a branch is withering, it is stealing energy from the rest of the tree that could be utilized to produce fruit. And if you cut off a rotten withering branch, there's more nutrients flowing to uh, the branches that are able to bear fruit. Uh, so a part of growing trees, and I'll show your mother knows this, is uh, cutting. Uh, cutting off branches and these have been heavily cut. And I think they will bloom in the uh, spring, possibly. I'm going to go into the food store. What I like about this store is they have things that are not available at the downtown supermarket. Now, I'm all maxed out on carrying capacity. All but. I have, what, two big bags in my left hand, the backpack, and I'm holding my phone with my right, so. Alrighty. These, if you see my duck feeding videos, I went here before and I bought these uh, milk bread with raisins in them. It's like, uh, it used to be $2, I think, or 2.5. And then I would uh, go to the duck pond and, and feed the ducks. All right, there's some kind of chili in my canyon. Sriracha. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sriracha. Sriracha. I'll do my own thing. Sriracha. Hot sauce. Sauce piquant. Stark sauce. Okay. Uh, vanilla. Okay, I'm a lot of things, but vanilla I am not. I would be more like that in there. Hot and irritating. Okay. I'm more like uh, chili sauce than uh, vanilla. Okay. That's good and bad in that. Anyway, let's not get carried away. They have lunch in meat soon. Um, let's not create a traffic jam. They have uh, date fruits here, back and seal, I like the one. Um, apricots. I bought figs here before. They have figs. Uh, when thou sat under the fig tree, I saw thee, Nathaniel. Uh, Israel indeed, in whom there is no guile. It's a Bible verse where Jesus saw a uh, man under a fig tree. I Meaning he was alone at the time. Later on, he meets Jesus in the flesh, and Jesus tells him that he saw him before when he was sitting under the fig tree. And Jesus was not hiding in a ghillie suit in the bushes, I don't believe. Uh, he was saying it in a, in a different way. Nathaniel. Okay. Okay. So what I like about the store, they have things that you can't find where I was downtown in the uh, Swedish supermarket. They had this uh, pack spread. Uh, these are things you can't find. These are figs. $2.5 for figs. Uh, they have this. This might be a Thai. Boon Raw Brewery. Singha Soda Water. Either Chinese or Thai, I would guess. No Thai letters though, so maybe it's Chinese. I know that they had a Thai energy drink here. That I saw before. I think I showed it to you once. That uh, energy drink, Thai energy drink. There are all kinds of stuff. Like what you could call novelty items. <laughs> it's really cutting into my fingers. And I'm crying really over about it. <laughs> okay. um, we're going to take a run through here. They have uh, honey. They used to have honey with the honeycomb. Uh, God's word is sweeter to my. Should be sweeter to your taste than honey in the honeycomb. I don't think they had the one with honeycomb. 
They used to have one that had honey. Oh. Do they have Thai? Thailand. Follow to Thailand. Bok Gao. Rice flour. This is also Thai. I'm running low on battery, so I'm gonna have to uh, speed up a little bit. What else I gonna get? I forgot. Salt. I'm gonna get salt. Uh, let your speech be always seasoned with salt, with salt, grace. Let your speech be always. Suffered Charity suffered long in his kind. Want to learn itself. He's not easily provoked. Think no evil, do no evil. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Um, what do you uh, use? I mean, it's more. Yeah. 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 Men det ska passa för dig. Det är som ett pulver. 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 Det Det är från IFK, det är från IFK, det är från IFK. Ibland svenska affär, då man har på sig. Det är det. Det är Sådär. Sådär. Tack, tack. Skytt då? Nej, tack. Tack.
Okay. My battery is running low, so if the phone dies, don't worry. Uh, that means something happened or something like this. Unless I wouldn't get in touch within 30 minutes, there might be something that happened. But uh, my battery is running low, so it might run out. You know, I think I might make it. Uh, I will call you after I come home. <coughs> I bought two uh, salt. I use that for my bath. It's not necessarily recommended. White table salt, I only use it for external use. Like plain, normal white table salt. For cooking, uh, anything I put in my body, I swallow it. Eat it, drink it. It's uh, Himalayan salt, the mineral salt. And I use uh, white table salt externally for uh, making my own salt water solution to rinse my sinuses. Uh, sometimes I put in a bath, like a detox bath. I bought two of those. So one of those would be good for one bath if I want to use a lot of it. Or I could use half of it, so it'd be four baths. And then on top of that, I like to put bicarb in there. Uh, I used to have make, uh, Epsom salt. Not anymore. I believe that uh, a detox bath in salt water might help to pull out toxic to the skin. I'm not a certain on that. There's different benefits. Take the face a little bit. Snap into one gear higher than the current one. I will call it when I get home. Uh, I expect my phone to die.
And I am back after a brief uh, hang up there. So what did happen was uh, the battery died as expected right before I entered the gate of my apartment complex, like 40 meters approximately away from it. So I'm back. I don't know if you're still watching or not. Last your vote was yes, Thai Soda. 09.09 a.m. The uh, stream your time is incorrect. So when it tells me that the timestamp or something that the message is incorrect, I don't know what it is. I think it could be something with my system time when I set up Windows on this computer that uh, I clicked the wrong time zone or something. And it's weird. It's hard to change it. I've manually changed it. I've uh, switched it. I can't find a GMT plus two, which is Sweden. And uh, I had to manually set it. And there's some kind of discrepancy. So it says 09.09 a.m but it's uh, the Windows clock. So the chat messages say 09, 09 a.m., the last one. And then if I check the system, it's 1823. Um, anyway, I'm back. And I have a lot of things to unpack, unhaul. Now, I could, if I want to end the live stream and make a new live stream. Grocery haul unboxing from the list. Or I can keep this going and maybe add something in the description if I want to title. Shopping and unboxing or something. So. I'm gonna begin to uh, do my Post homecoming routines. There's certain uh, stand open procedures I've developed. Things that I do. Always do this. Never do that. Always do this. In this situation, do this. Not for everything, but certain things. I mean, after I come home, I do nasal rinse because I've inhaled allergens into my sinuses. Uh, I wash my face, my hands. I have yet to do that. Uh, meaning I'm considering my hands to be covered in paint right now, mentally, pretty much. Um, and uh, gargle with salt water, same that I used to uh, flush my sinuses out with the uh, nose cleaning contraption, nasal eye monitor. Better than any pot, in my view. There's more pressure, variable pressure, not just the gravity, whatever the force is called. There's a, Habit, uh, maybe that's called heat or thing. I don't know, but it's it's uh, you tilt it and it pours the uh, neti pot. It looks like what you used to water your pots with. I have something better. I have a monojack. It looks like a big syringe, it's like what you would use to inject a bull with something. Only instead of a needle at the end of it, it has a silicone tip that fits that creates a uh, watertight seal in your nostril. Then you push up on the piston, it shoots up liquid one off, comes out the other. And that is not only good for people who have allergies, it's also good if you have, uh, could help if you have sinus issues, not, not consult the doctor, maybe make it worse or some type of sinus issue. Um, anyway, I'm gonna finish up, I gotta take this off. Where's my plate carrier? I have a lot of sweat on me. When I wear my plate carrier, my body my posture will get worse because I, I covert carry it so I'm not wanting to advertise that I wear it but I'm not so and I wear it like, like this see this is my posture right now so I wear it so it's not poked out a lot if I have normal posture it looks like I have like a cutting board under my jacket or something like this your print your like outline under the jacket and it will, it will look like I have a a washboard under my jacket or something like this, like some something this shape, uh, printing like the jacket. So home sweet home, home free. I'm free. I'm home. Home free. So I'm not gonna hang it from my bed. I'll be right back. We might have left. Might have left.
All right. I washed my face. Next up, I'm going to uh, blow my nose and do an HOA. Break my throat. So what I did just now was lean over the tub. Sometimes when I get home and I have other things to do, like right now, unpack. I, pr I have freezer, like things that even go in the freezer in the fridge. And I don't have time to take a full shower, so. Very nice, I say. And I will take my uh, shirt off. 
walk from the meaning of the palm and walk from the uh, neck down and from the uh, shoulder to the top guys lay down and take four shots. I'm a one thing kind of guy. I want I find one quality, one thing that I like, and I stick to it a lot of times. The uh, M90 pants, Swedish Army M90 pants, and the uh, the Samuel Tech. It's called Tech the Hoodie, and they call the items that fit suit my needs: durable, strong, wear tear resistant, uh, warm. No, I think they look good too. Doesn't hurt. Uh, function over form. And uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's it. Now I'm gonna clean the uh, touchpad on my laptop because I touched it with washing my hands after coming from outside. This is not paranoia, but corona paranoia, okay? I'm allergic, and sometimes when you're outside, you might get things happening that you're allergic to. And then if you touch other things in your home, you're contaminated, you know? And then three hours later, when you try to relax, watch a movie, you might start itching on your hands, on your face, and so it's because you uh, you had allergens on your hands and touch a keyboard or a touch bird. And then you uh, touch that later, so very Letters in Stockholm. It has a bill names. It has bill names. It's the other side. I bought this. These are nicotine pouches. They're called snoops in Swedish. They look like a very small pillow. They're like a tea bag shaped like a pillow, a rectangle pillow, only very small, miniature. And you put it on your lip, and it slowly releases nicotine uh, into your mouth. And it's absorbed by your uh, mucous membranes. Uh, Sublingual. Uh, it absorbs it in, inside your mouth, it gets into bloodstream your mouth without smoking it. I don't use it a lot. I smoke most of the time. If I'm in an environment where you can't smoke, I might put one in. Uh, a lot of times one a day. I put one in before I go to sleep. I will go to sleep with one in the other time. Anyway, it's going to time to unpack some of my items. Maybe I should start a new life stream. We might have fallen asleep. These are this is a big pack of potato chips, gluten free, 450 grams, cheese flavored. Super crunch, cheese crunchers. In here I have the salt. Solo garlic. This means there is a special type of garlic that is one ball of garlic, not a cluster. Bayonnaise sauce. This distorts El Chico brand. They, they have a line of products, the Ica supermarket, ICA, Ica is how you pronounce it in Swedish, Ica. Um, 
they have their own brand called Basic. So if you buy like Nescafe Instant Coffee Powder, maybe it's seven dollars, eight. And then the store's own uh, cheap brand called Basic might be three point five dollars or four or something. This is gonna go into the ozone purification chamber, and I'm going to suspend this on a hook that I have inside there. Umbrella hot and chilly. Hot sweet chili. Cheese doodle. Big fat. They had two for 40. That's approximately four dollars. Two of these. This is the tomato juice. This is makes for a perfect protein shake. I'm still fasting. Those of you who watched my podcast for me today, I was getting ready to cook my fast bacon, but I ex decided to extend my fast. And earlier today, I did a video making this. And I said I use it. This is my uh, super shake. Now, this is okay because it has, what I like about it is glass, first of all. Plastic leaches toxins into liquids, especially if you heat it up. Um, this here is if you look in a normal size bottle like the saline solution that i use for nasal rinses uh it's a this is a normal size bottle you can't fit a teaspoon in here so i want to make a protein shake i'll put amino acids and my five gram teaspoon mixture uh half of it but some of it will go outside the bottle so i like these bottles it's a big opening and I can actually put a teaspoon inside of it, fit it inside open. So I don't need to get a funnel and then shake it down and stuff. So I just have a teaspoon, I can do it. Now this is even better, I saw this today, they have a tomato sauce. And it looks like, I don't know, what, how much, one liter, yeah. And this is 750 milliliters, 75 centimeters. So yeah, this is bigger, contains more liquid, a liter. Sometimes I will make this kind of like a concentrated drink a little bit and pour up more water in it. Uh, and this is, has an even big opening, so it's even better. Ararat Canning Factory Tomato Juice. Sounds like a Turkish brand, possibly. Ararat. Ingredients, tomato and salt. No sugar items today. Sugar-free. Stay going strong. Sugar-free 2023. And I will be honest, man, if I would, which I'm not going to do that. Okay, but if I would be like, you know what, I'm canceling this, I'm, I'm gonna give myself sugar cheap weekends or something. I'm kind of like, you know, I'm not like, I don't know, it's like fake things. Like, I'm sugar free. Okay, and they're like, I'm, I don't want to eat sugar secret or something like this. There are some fitness influencers who do this. It's like they're fake vegan or something like this. It's called fit in the fitness community. I think it's Frank Tifon that made videos about that. Now I'm better than Frank Tifon, I'm the real nutrition genius. Okay, this makes it sound like a narcissist, like it does when he says it. But since I saw him start to call himself, it's like the Andy Pig thing. I double down on comments myself, Neil the Matrix, after I see this other guy, who's like, if Neil the Matrix like 100 points, how much Neil the Matrix are you? And Andy Tate is like 4, and I'm 76, a strong 76. And it can fluctuate up and down, okay? Walking in the spirit or not, and the other things, day form, okay? How, how real you are on a day day basis. Uh, but at least I, this guy's called himself in the Matrix, and I'm actually there. Okay. It's almost like stolen value, okay? It's like if I grow up, call myself a Navy SEAL or something like this. It's like, dude, you're not a Navy I'm a, if some guy sees me, like, I'm a real Navy SEAL, dude, it's okay. And he's going to be like, I'm a Navy SEAL, goddammit. He will be like that, like a real Navy SEAL, possibly. Okay. So I see these fakes out here pretending to be what I am, and then it makes me double down, meaning I was, it might look like it's too arrogant calling myself need the matrix all the time or the uh, nutrition genius or something like this but i see people like frank the phone call himself the nutrition genius he remotes himself as that even if not the nutrition genius okay i'm an actual genius okay genius of iq and i am an expert in health fitness okay um is the people that other people that know more facts about health certain toxins yes for sure but it, an expert i have to check the world before i start calling myself it 
and it's not about somebody who's highly laudable and trying to do that sort of noble things. And I think we'll be also open to the other thing, that perspective. Um, yeah, so once I saw the uh, <laughs> saw Frank Holland started calling himself the nutrition genius, and I had to go to his YouTube channel, which had come by Vinus Omega also, he hasn't figured that out yet. The nutrition genius, how to be strong, fit, healthy. Okay, talks to him, how to protect yourself, detox your body, things. And he's not had, wasn't talking at the time. This is what I give to the newbie, you guys. He also talked about vitamin C, okay? And uh, I came and watched something in his chat, and I wasn't talking, I wasn't going there like Kang Hong was a scumbag or attacking or talking. So I was just, I was being diplomatic, you know, like, uh, vitamin C is very important, can heal all kinds of health problems, all kinds of this. And he's like, no, you, you can't absorb it, wasting your money, not more than two grams, you're not going to absorb it, you're just going to pee it out, it take more than two grams, it's cold, it may be two grams at most, so this type of BS from Frank Capone. And this guy's comes out with Trisha Genius, and I had to come teach him about why I'm I don't know if he's accepted or not, but meaning I had to tell him. Um, and he wasn't at the time last shot on his YouTube channel and talked about vitamin C. And in response to me bringing it up, it's like big pharma myths, mason myths, big pharma myths. Vitamin C is, is not uh, okay, important if it, if it is it, but no, okay. Um, so yeah, he calls that the nutrition genius. So I, I'm, I've sort of called myself a nutrition genius now. Right? Now, more recently, it's I'm doubling down on the uh, need the matrix thing, okay. Once this Andrew Tate guy. I'm in the matrix. Um, and that, well, if you look at what he's doing, I'm waking up in the matrix. It's all marketing and emotion, and and uh, uh, okay, it's packaging. This is and I'm discussing with you guys right now. They pack. I'm the real deal. Uh, it's like crickets on my YouTube channel. But the fake deal, who's marketing, not he not he's not what he pretends to be. But the marketing, the emotion, the music, the production, the things that the mainstream, the people in the matrix have been. The matrix has in mind, they've been conditioned to respond to certain types of content. Okay, and if it's not actually the way they've been trained to respond to, they're not going to respond to it. No matter how important, valuable something is. If they say somebody claims to be something, they're not. And the real deal has crickets on the YouTube channel. It, the fake deal somehow can get people to look at him as if he's what I am, near the matrix. Does he have videos and Tate? Like in the Matrix, seeing the code in the system, life stream to decode the whole rules, show you the hidden code that the Matrix architects have hidden the whole rules. See, that's a strong point for being like a concept in the Matrix. You know, newbie, you can see the code. After he wakes up, he can see the code in the Matrix system. And it's like he can see, oh, there's a screen with like numbers, and he can like, there's two agents there, and maybe other people can see it. Okay. Okay. Um, I do have that, I check that box. I got decoded all kinds of stuff, fiber docking, all this, movies, music videos, etc. And also it's like, what, what am I teaching you? Like, here's how the satanic matrix is used to pack your health. Young men, older men, women, whoever. They wanted to get pack you like this, wake up, you need to take this pill, ascorbic acid, to protect yourself from the satanic onslaught. In other words, they pack you hormonal health, potion you, uh, all your mind, okay, they want to soften you up with softening sugar, okay, it's softening, it's, it's like this is a decode I did, the pattern decode, softening, it's like once you know what I know, it's like they want to make the public soft targets, they don't want people that are hard to control, because the agenda is to control humanity, and if you have an agenda, you're evil, psychopathic, narcissistic, sociopath running an abusive system of control, uh, you need people to be easy to control, okay. And if somebody is sharp minded, they're easy, harder to deceive. If you're not in the right mind, you're sleep deprived, you're easier to con. If I'll be awake for three days and Jehovah's Witness knock on my door, I'm not going to cooperate. But I will be more likely to give them my time, maybe. Okay. If I'm not in my right mind, if I'm drunk or sleep deprived, something like this. Something that makes me not be sober minded. The things that can make you not be sober minded that are not consuming alcoholic beverages or, or narcotics. Sleep deprivation can be have an unsolving effect. It has a similar physiological effect, biological, as drunkenness. In terms of motor function, balance, uh, uh, lowered inhibition, impulse control, uh, mood, volatility, etc. Meaning it's, it can be similar to sleep deprivation, depending on. Yeah. Um, anyway, here's the point. There's many ways that you can be counted as not sober. Okay. 
I mean, the Bible talks about being sober-minded, for example, and it has a vi wider application meaning than don't drink alcohol. There are other things you can do, but you're not. I'm not drinking alcohol. I'm sober-minded. I'm saying, well, there are things that you can do where you're not kind of sober with alcohol. Uh, should go to one of those, and it's not only talk about physical stuff. Right? It's like you can be a uh, the opposite of sane and rational and pure-minded. Anyway, here's the point. They have an agenda to control humanity. And if I want to beat an opponent in chess, uh, if he's sharp, he's harder for me to win against, to defeat, to control. Okay. If I could, if I was like a professional chess player, if I could be like sneak some substance to make him have an IQ, acute IQ decrease while we're playing, if I was that type of person, would it? Okay, I understand. It's like if you could get him drunk before the grand tournament, tournament or something like this. Or make him sleep deprived. Something that makes his mind not be as sharp. Soften him up mentally. It's like this is a hard guy to beat. Okay, hard opponent. The opposite that would be soft. Sugar has that effect. They marketed and started the public to consume high amounts of sugar, soft drinks, soft serve ice creams. They conditioned the public to put softener in their uh, washing machines. He even says right in the face, even in front of you, softener. And you put softener, wash your clothes, put it on your body. So the softener is on you. So they want to soften out across the board, full spectrum, psychologically, physically. Okay. Um, they want to soften it up. I mean, if they eat enough sugar, you're going to get softened up. Okay. Like a fatty cat. Okay. Ready for the slaughter. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so but that's one of the things I've been looking at recently. Like the, the softener pattern. Okay. And it's something that it. it, it I, I saw, like, not that long ago, it's like I got connected to us, like the soft and testosterone going back. They work to women's testosterone, how they accomplish this before it. And it's like in my own washing machine, I would use it. There's a compartment you call it softener. Once you know the leads are working, you can listen to Alex Jones and Alan Watt to talk about lowering sperm counts and saving some of the lower. They might use other words for saying this. They're saying it's one of the lower sperm counts. They want to lower women's testosterone. Testosterone is going to decline, sperm counts in particular, blah, blah, blah. And then if you take that and run with it, you have a mind that's sharp, or that's more or less. Uh, your back and your legs are sharp. And it's back for a B and a cat with excla ex ex exclamation mark. Maybe you should listen when I speak this musical sleep. Stuff. Anyway, here's the point. <laughs> here's the point. Uh, so they soften it. Okay, so I'm like, okay, I, I've learned they want to soften you up. I, it's like the it's like the puzzle piece. It's like first I learned like I hear Al Watt and and uh, Alex Jones talking about this. And I'm not saying I have been totally completely unaware about this, but it's like it brings it to your attention, to your memory if you've heard about it before. But it's like hearing this, like the elites want to lower you, like gay frogs, they work low men's testosterone, etc. And then you take it around with it. You know that's true, okay? You're fully persuaded that is correct. That is happening. There are forces working to do certain things to attack your body in general, okay, the elites. And then you look at it, you learn health thickness, no health thickness. You know that science of low testosterone is a soft physique. You know that uh, science of low testosterone is soft to men incapable, okay. Um, you know that uh, it makes you physically, like your body, look, you talk about this guy's hard, okay, like my physique, it's, it's like hard, it's a chisel there, you know, okay. It looks hard, okay, the opposite of soft. If I would start eating a lot of sugar, lower my testosterone, and start using all the stuff that I know to be endocrine disruptors um, and things that alter the attack of hormonal health, I might start having a harder time to be as lean as me and start putting on some weight. Same level of activity, everything else I'm doing. Not getting lazy or something like this, but I, I, you would maybe slowly, slowly, especially as I age, like every year testosterone levels decline naturally. That's not the elite thing that it will decline naturally. Your male prime, like testosterone levels are 25, around 25. Um, and uh, even in the thirties, it can have a uh, time. But once you, you pass 30, it's, 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 it's down. So, so if you want to work out, start it before you hit 30. It's hard to build muscle after 40 in this day and age. I'm not saying it's impossible. Don't be a defeatist. You just remember that the statistics are sourced from average men that don't make it all spiraling C. 
So the test script is about men's testosterone declining or in men that are not making also vitamin C, consuming high amounts of sugar, they're using perfume and fragrances on their body every day. Okay. That those are the groups where they say men's uh, testosterone decline every year this much. Okay, that's a test group or whatever you say, study group. Um, if you want to be an uncommon man, you have to live an uncommon life. See? If you want to be extraordinary fit, that meaning oh this guy is four looks like he's thirty two or something. But if you want to be a, be an extraordinary person, uncommon, you have to live an uncommon life. What are most people doing? They're not avoiding these fragrances that are known to lower your testosterone levels. I've made videos about this. You can check out my Mike Sal 2.0 channel, 2.0. And I upload some videos, a series, Detox Your Life. And one of them, I, it's like, I think it's in the thumbnail. I'm showing these topics I'm talking about. And I have some link in one of those videos to some article about fatalities that you can find in fragrances, like the softener and the perfume and things like this. And talk about the effects on hormone levels. Okay? So it's like it's like the psychopathic mocking of the victim is part of where it's like that, like it's just like with 9 11 when they take a plane view, I think a video from the video. It's like we're gonna soften humanity, we put it right in front of the face, kind of like hint, hint, and they're still not trying to figure it out. And people like Mike, who can decode the system, they need to make it seem like, hey, people, the same as having a feeling, would you stop doing I can see what they're doing to you, like the Empress of Gold. Other people, they know that you will go and mock him and be like, this guy is not the same person, you're reading too much into it, is what somebody came and said. When I was doing a live decode of the dichotomy, this, this scene and decoding it, that this scene is representing this 9 11, the two pillars dropping in Boaz, opposites, black man, white man, okay? In the always movie, it's a fat man and a skinny man. What are that? Opposites. This is something that hit my mind, cut into my mind as I was thinking about this. I take it around with it. Once I learn, like, the, just the basic, okay? Develop an intuitive perception of everything. It's like you hear Jockin and Boaz Freemason thing, okay? Two pillars represent opposites, male, female, male, female. And then you take a run with it. Wait a minute, die hard. Like, after I've already seen it before, 9 11, they have a scene where there's two guys sitting on top of a heap of explosives. They represent the two towers. Sit on top of a bunch of explosives. What are they? Just like in the always movie scene where, please be, where, uh, <laughs> where, uh, where the airplane. Uh, is moving towards two men standing in an airstrip. One of them holds the American flag. The, the, the scene is teaching you America will be attacked by an airplane. Two towers. The two men are representing that scene, the two towers. They're opposites in the bodies. One is fat, one is skinny. What is that opposite? Like, a skinny guy is the opposite of a fat guy. Not, he's not like very skinny and not extremely obese, but it's like a heavy set guy and a light guy. Opposites, okay? And then the airplane is flying towards them when they're standing like two pillars, the two towers. And the airplane is flying towards them. And they jump out of the way. So they get taken out of the way, moved out of the way by this airplane flying and looking like they're going to crash into these two guys. Okay. Next scene, I decoded it too. They jump into Willis MB Jeep, which is a military vehicle that America uses when they go to war somewhere, traditionally. Okay. Willis MB Jeep. They, they have it in one of my video games, actually. <laughs> Men of War is also one too. Uh, you can use you can play as a military robot too. Um, so um, maybe I wouldn't have noticed that if I hadn't played the game. <laughs> okay, anyway, it's the point. Uh, so that's what, what I'm seeing there, the decode is chronological order, analyzing the scenes, chrono chronological order, key, decode key. And they show you the two towers and then the following events. After we fly the plane into two towers, America's gonna go to war, represented by the Willis Jeep. That's it's like converting the visuals, the picture speaks more than a thousand words. Decode the visuals into word sentences. It'd be like, first it's gonna happen, towers gonna fly into two towers. Next up, after that scene, after this, America will go to war. Okay. Uh, and, uh, 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 and then another movie, Die Hard, after I saw the scene, the foreshadowing, like one thing I pick up on you, oh, this foreshadow of Die Hard in this movie. Once you see one thing, when it rains, it pours, is one of my sayings that I like to use a lot of times. When it rains, it pours. Uh, you go looking more, and I find more and more things on each new viewing. Like I take a new look, I see something else. And one of the things I saw was um, one of the scenes the terrorist, Simon says, so they're also hinting at it. That there's a terrorist that is communicating riddles to them. What are riddles? It's hidden communication. 
did somebody give you enough communication to figure out the meaning to extract the meaning but not so much that it's obvious to everybody you have to crack the code of the riddle you have to decode it it's like a riddle contains the answer to the riddle but not so obvious that a fool could, could figure it out <coughs> There's a saying about a word to the wise is sufficient or something like this. Okay, meaning little information is needed for a wise person to gain understanding of something. If you're a fool, you need an hour long. Uh, do you understand? And most people are fools, unfortunately. What am I gonna say? Like this? Yeah, I like it. What, whatever. <laughs> okay, here's the. The scene. One man, one black man, one white man, opposites once again sitting on top of a bunch of explosives and the movie is about a terrorist that gives them riddles there is like there are in the movie there's the theme of hidden meaning coded meaning that needs to be cracked to stop terrorists what i see is like the elites going if you you we give you enough information in pop culture this movie alone that you could crack it and know that what's going to happen so you could be like i'm not going to go into public places in New York, because the movie takes place in New York, and there's a terrorist hiding bombs inside of buildings, which is how 9 11 really happened. Controlled demolition, planting explosive charges on load bearing beams. It was set rigged to, to go down. Um, if, you, if you don't understand what that means, you can search YouTube for Vegas Hotel Demolition. Okay, and that's what World Trade Center 7 looked like when it went down, and World Trade Center 1 and 2, including the squibs. Where an explosive, if I would have a hand grenade here and blow it up, my window will get blown out and there will be dust and a puff of smoke going out of the window. I don't have hand grenades at home, okay? You can't swap me. But if I would have a hand grenade, this was a movie and it's a military thing, and I pull uh, the, the hand grenade goes off in here, or somebody else who explodes into the window, it will explode and it will blow up the window. There are puff of smoke coming out of it and a flash, possibly, depending on what type of explosives, how fast the powder is consumed, okay? Like the, there can be a flash hole with movies that suck a bit fighting. A lot of times it'll be like a kind of like a gunshot, like they, they, a, a, for a split second if it's dark, you can see like their light, okay? A similar to that. Um, and you can see this, that they are called squibs uh, by controlled de demolition experts. I think they're like, that's the, uh, what is it called? Inside baseball terms that they use, okay? Like squibs. Uh, and you can see that. So, World Trade Center is standing, not hit by an airplane. And then you, I watch the slow-mo footage. You can see windows being blown out before, pre, during, post, no, pre and during collapse. And that poof, window blow up, window blow out, and then it collapses without, it looks like it's like, like butter melting. No resistance, like a virtually no resistance, recall speed. Um, that's a good demolition. Compare and contrast that to the videos they have of Vegas buildings going up, being exploded when demolition went. They go to the center team, the experts. They uh, they have like, oh, here's the concrete pillars to carry up the building. Okay, like a skeleton of the building, okay. Uh, and then uh, maybe they pre-cut it, like cut this to 50% weaken it, and we'll put explosive charge on the side that remains. I, I'm not an expert on this, but if I, I can guess that there might be something like that in the world, or drill in it, or whatever. And maybe they weaken it so they, don't, they can save on how much explosive they have to use. They weaken it a little bit because things are built for redundancy. Meaning buildings are built to be able to sustain more load than they are normally carrying in case there will be a storm or a weakening of the material over time and things like this. Um, anyway, here's the point. So they can weaken it and not have it collapse by weakening it a little bit and they know how much. But whatever, the main thing is they plant explosive chargers on the, the key. Parts of the building that carry the building up, like a skeleton of the, of the building. Do, 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 do. Let's say there's like eight pillars inside the building that holds up the whole building, and you put explosives on each of them, and then you go like outside, okay, like a cartoon thing, and it blows up, cuts all these beams simultaneously, and it goes just collapses because it's like from having being held up by these things, suddenly there's nothing holding the building up anymore. There's nothing to hold it up. Gravity starts working, and it goes down. And if you, I, I would expect this to be what happened if the World Trade Center towers, you had some kind of fuel hot enough, melting long enough, burning, to be able to 
bring you down with a, some kind of fire, I would expect it to be an asymmetrical collapse, meaning you might expect to see here's the tower, and then one side crumbles and collapses a few floors at the top. Okay, like an incremental collapse, an asymmetrical collapse. Maybe it's like, like half of the building uh, it gets cut and it falls on a few floors. And then they start bending slowly as the steel beams are melting. Okay, bending slowly. And then maybe like collapse a little bit. And then I uh, understand. You, you're not going to see something if you would have a fire hard enough to start melting the building. It's not going to be that suddenly all the beams are, asy are symmetrically weakened at the same rate. So they all lose their load bearing capacity at the same time. Okay. Meaning if it's a fire, it will be hot on one side of the building and the steel melts at a certain temperature, it weakens at a certain temperature. It's just common sense to me, uncommon sense, possibly. Uh, do I have common sense? Some people say, Michael, please, you don't have common sense. Not only do I have common sense, but I have uncommon sense, like a word to me. I think it's pretty good. That's a comment. Here's a point. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, here's a point. Um, so you would expect if you have the steel beams on the building, there's a fire. It will not be exactly as hard inside the entire building. Off its rise. It'd be harder than that one beam would lose its low brain capacity first and then another one. And it's not gonna be like at the same time they all lose the the, the ability to okay, this is just common sense. How metals just how the physics work, okay? So it, it makes no sense to me on face value looking at like the official story and just look at the buildings that it's like fires caused this. And my personal little opinion is, I believe that there was a plane headed for World Trade Center 7. Something changed, maybe it was Flight 93, the crash or Pennsylvania, I think it was. Maybe there was passenger on board that actually did uh, do something. I don't know, but maybe there was rogue F-16s that shot down the plane and then they covered it up. Like they weren't in on the conspiracy or something like this. Um, okay. I don't know, but I, I I would bet on, I would bet on there was a plane headed for, or a missile, it was a plane, something headed for World Center 7, something, random act of God, something happened, and World Center 7 wasn't hit by a plane as intended, because that was what they used as a cover up for the collapses of the other buildings, World Center 1, 2, Pentagon, hit by airplanes, okay, that's what caused this damage, airplanes crashed into them. I think there might have been a, a plane headed for Center 7 and something didn't go to plan. And then they're like, we have this building rigged up uh, to blow and it's something that makes it hard to cover up, okay? It's like it's full of explosives, it's being really, we've been doing things. And we have this plan, okay, for some reason. It might not just be that the word about being exposed, somebody like walking in and seeing the explosive or something, but it could be that it's something that is important, we got this plan, it's a ritual, it's gotta be the right numbers, whatever. Um, and they go, we're just gonna have to pull it anyway. If you can get them to believe that airplanes brought these towers down, what, uh, come on guys, you can get them to believe that the building just crumbled out of sympathy, that things were flying, and, and, okay. Uh, all right, and if that, if somebody says, and everything, they think they can get away with that. If that was the case, they proved not to be, in the sense of thinking that they can get away with things. <laughs> they can't, okay, then, all right. Um, yeah, so but to the, the scene that I talked about in the assignment says, here's a video, we have to crack some codes here. I've hidden explosives inside of buildings in New York. Okay, that's the Marine. And there's a black guy and a white guy, so they have opposites. The the uh, the always movie, it also contains four channels. It's a fat guy and a skinny guy. Opposites, okay. What is not opposite? Male, female, what is not opposite? A black man and a white man. Meaning the opposite skin colors. The, the lightest skin color would be like my complexion and the darkest one would be an African person but it's opposite on the color spectrum and they're sitting on top of a pile of explosives they're symbolizing the towers the two towers the two pillars of Freemasonry Jock Queen and Boaz um, and then you can see the phoenix rising out of the flames ritual like the thing that's big in the pool it's like you destroy something to burn something as a phoenix rising out of the lid of ashes, you had the one World Trade Center, making of himself a twain wonder man. They're, 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 this is how they operate, they knew God. Satan is like a counterfeit king. He likes to, Satan is big on religion. 
He's got crosses and crucifixes and clean clothes and walk by Jesus. Satan is not going to be like, uh, like a movie that is like, it's not going to be any talk about Jesus. No, no, no. Satan runs religion, like Catholicism. Okay. Um, so my point is this. The unification of opposites. The destroying the two pillars. And then birthing out of that. And that physical process is also mirrored in the use this crisis to birth changes in, in the world. The new laws, Patriot Act, spying on Americans, Guantanamo Bay, extraordinary rendition, enhanced interrogation. There are different things that they started doing at first. So they birthed a change in society by destruction. It's like a phoenix ritual. So you have something destroying like an as a phoenix rise out of the flames and fire. Okay. And you have something new birthing. So that's in the esoterically, like the, the occult esoteric stuff. And also the numerology, 9-11. Like I talked about before, uh, two towers look like number 11, like a digital lock box or something like this. Okay. So number 11 happened on 9-11. Two things that look like number 11 were brought down on what day? 9-11. Oh. All kinds of things. I'm, I'm not going to get food poisoned, bottomless, and by making the food thing very far, I'm going to have to keep on slapping the food. So, anyway, here's the point. Finally. Fasting. Um, I hope to. Cognac Midwurst. Now this doesn't contain enough alcohol to get you drunk or anything. It's a cognac flavor. Cognac Midwurst. Type of uh, thing for the sandwich. This is the uh, Brie cheese. I was looking at the, I was eyeing the president. They have a president like gold. Uh, on the same type of cheese. But I'm, 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 I'm not for the drink. Walking out time game this today. It wasn't exactly a cake walk, but it wasn't too far. I wasn't on my in yet the, the, the low engine on this is lack of free body. Okay. Uh, Turkish yogurt. Lactose free. I buy lactose free uh, products. If I consume something that's lactose like cheese, you can't really find lactose free. Um, I take lactose enzymes, and I still feel like I have somewhat of a sensitivity. Meaning I get a little bit gassy, constipation, things like that, I gotta do a C-flux or two. But, uh, it, it's not like gluten, okay? Gluten I don't play with, <laughs> okay? I don't play with gluten. Um, lactose, I might be low to no lactose. Sugar-free, gluten-free, low to no lactose with digestive enzymes, uh, lactose enzymes to be consumed. I bought this here. This is a gold uh, candle. And I'm hoping it's not gonna have some kind of toxic cold. Like I hope the pain is natural. Okay, well obviously, there will be too big a conspiracy. Like what's happening? Well, <laughs> okay. They, they could have super toxic fumes coming off the candle. Uh, and maybe some kind of natural. No toxic fume producing pain. Uh, this was 12 crowns, 1.2 dollars exactly. And this is what I bought at the Salvation Army store. I think that we might have fallen asleep actually. This lady in town, she was watching and then she uh, stopped watching. I bought this dub, okay. And it started with I saw this and then I was in the store and then I saw the candles, okay. So. I would have to use some tin for something to create a fire seal. Because this is a uh, fire hazard, I'm not going to burn this. I would have to create some kind of instrument for this, it's a little bit too big. But this is a dub, 10 crowns, approximately a dollar, one dollar. And this is a dub. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, this is a dub. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is a gold candle. 
I was thinking to buy the silver symbolic that fits because uh, the words are a lot of cool words and silver purifies in a term is over seven times or something like this. But gold is also the word of God. It's a reference symbol to the word of God and silver. Uh, so you can go in both. I like the colors. I went with aesthetics what I like the most, not the symbolical mm. symbol like get red. Anyway, um, but I digress and I do back wax verbose. Oh, but I digress and do wax verbose. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna we uh take my time. I like to take my time if you're rushing. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, wrapping that they give you at the jewelry store. They have that from newspaper to wrap up the glass items. And there's people's schemes. There's people's schemes. Christina, on the other side it says uh, Christina Hesseholt, born 1962, introduced in Swedish 2017 with the whatever, uh, uh, company, Vivian, yeah, they have a picture of a lady called Christina, okay, uh, what else? I bought another glass. This glass. And uh, we, Miss Penny Havari, she was part of the, uh, she was participating in the selection process of glasses. And uh, she voted for this. And this is, was uh, five pounds, I think. I thought it was a dollar, but it turned out to be five pounds, so I bought it for a pound. I like it. There was some other glasses that I like too, but they were uh, function. Aesthetically, it might be better from some perspective, but function. Meaning, this is more or less stable and seeking. It's hard to talk to this. The other glasses are uh, top heavy, some of them. And it's easy to be light to brush against it very well. Perhaps how. And uh, yeah, I like this one. It's uh, bottom heavy. Anyway, here's the point. Okay, full leaf clover. Here's the point. Um, uh, the scene, decal. Let's get on with the decal. I didn't finish that up. Okay, I didn't finish that up. Uh, die Hard movie, Simon Says, giving them rid of the terrorist in New York that has planted explosives in New York, this terrorist. He's giving them rid of the crack about where the bombs are, what's going to happen. Okay, what's going to happen, okay, if you don't solve the riddle? I plant the explosives inside of buildings in New York. Yeah. Uh, and it's a black man, a white man. At a certain point in the scene, I should have said spoiler alert, possibly. Okay, but this is a 90s movie. It's almost like a cult, okay, movie. Okay. Um, but one of the scenes is uh, they're sitting on a barge, I think, in the water, some kind of boat. And there's a heap of explosives, and they're sitting chained to a, like a pole or something. Okay, the two men, one black, one white. And then the guy is a lock picker, so he decodes locks, and he's a lock picker. And uh, the black man, Samuel Jackson, and Bruce Willis plays the, uh, the cop John McCain. And uh, the black man, Samuel Jackson, was drafted off the streets, okay? It's kind of like happened to be at a certain place, certain time, by chance, um, and got kind of like uh, pulled into it. Um, <laughs> and they, they end up sitting on top of a bunch of explosives. They, those are representative buildings, okay? Like they're always moving, so the two men represent the two towers, one another. Same with this scene. They, they're sitting on the heap of explosives, which how they brought down the two towers. Two men opposite, black, white, thick, thin, um, tall, short, you could have done that too. Um, cop, criminal, criminal, they could be somebody, the opposite of the claimant. 
the racism of me. Um, but yeah, whatever, they went what they went with. And uh, another thing that I saw that is more subtle, and it's one of the scenes is the evacuating schools in New York, which I think happened after 9 11. They started evacuating public places, okay? And there's kids in, in New York, and there's a bomb uh, a technician, okay, EOD. And he was sitting there working with the bomb, the evacuating school of kids. And there's some kids that, when they all got all the people outside of the school, and like the principal again, all the people outside, they see some kids like up in the window behind boards, and okay, there's like boards, and you know, and then like they're up there, I think, it's in this boards. And then like somebody's gonna go in there to get the kids, and he holds up his decode key cipher. If you're gonna unlock a code, a cipher, enigma, you need a decode key to unlock the meaning. Okay, you have to go A, B, C. That could be a code for one, two, three. Okay, you have to remember that. It could be two, three, four. It could be B, C, D. Okay, for example, that would be a simple one. So that that, that would be a key if I tell you that the first letter is A. And then I give you C, and you know one, two, three. Okay, that's a decode key, a cipher, uh, cipher key. And then so one of the dance goes, the guys kind of go up and pull the kids out of the building that has explosives in it, and he so it goes throws them a keychain, and he goes anything marked with four, and I ask like, if it's seven, if it's seven, then it's going to building seven. But I think it's four. Uh, anything marked with four will work to unlock, and. That would be if it would be seven. If I would have misremembered, my I, I think it was four. If it would be seven, it would be building seven. If it was four, that is the number of buildings that got hit on 9 11, according to my math. Uh, Pentagon, WTC one, two, seven, four buildings. Four buildings. Decode anything marked with four will unlock it. That's a decode key. They give me all this little cookie crumbs. Okay, hands and grill. They, they give me all this little trail of, of cookie crumbs and the cubit. They're shining. They give you this little trail of cookie crumbs and uh, they, 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 a little bit here, a little bit there, here a little, there a little, that I might be snared and taken. Here a little, there a little. Okay. Um, and uh, this is what I mean. So I, I don't think that I'm being arrogant but from a certain in the matrix once I've seen. Uh, and the tapes saying that and what is I might be kind of like characterizing a little bit but what I've seen from him I haven't do, done a deep dive and stay away from the guy but you cannot have uh, you can't have not seen him if you don't look online if you just pop up and my sense from from like a far glance is that it's like I'm here to, I'm in the matrix I'm here to teach you wake up what a matrix tell what don't what no and then it's like join my discord call $50 a month I'll teach you how to get laid and rich, okay, okay, that's a, a little bit characterizing, okay. This is fair use for entertainment purposes, okay. Not to be taken as, as fact, okay. But it's like entertainment is kind of wake up on a matrix, wake up. The matrix has a mind. You need to listen to me, and I'll teach you how to do rich and, and, and get laid and be attracted to women, okay, or something like this. I don't know, okay. Now, who's really in the matrix? The guy who's doing what I've just been doing here because I have the ability to see the code in the, in the system. And also is teaching people, like, they, they're attacking you in these different ways to try to protect yourself. You need to take ascorbic acid, you need to take this vitamin, that vitamin. That's like, they might sound silly, that sounds sexy. Like the movie plot, it's like, the, the, one of the most important things to fight the Matrix is to take supplements, okay? But it does fit with the movie, the way he offers like a blue pill or red pill. The blue pill will be big pharma. And the red pill will be ascorbic acid. That just hit me in real time, actually. I think I, yeah, it might be like a remembrance. I forgot that I knew it and remembered. But the red pill would be, it's more time than this. But one minute would be the red pill symbolizes ascorbic acid, vitamin C, God's medicine. The blue pill would be big pharma. And then uh, other than that would be law and, and, and grace. It's like uh, works, grace, law, grace. Uh, blood atonement. The red, the deeper cell will be the blood, the red pill symbolizes the blood atonement of Christ. So in the gospel. Uh, yeah, so the, 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 it's uh, it, it's uh, it's a, it's a wild, wild ride. Okay. It's a wonderful ride. It's a wonderful world. Uh, so 
this is what I'm more confident about to do. Well, <laughs> I feel like the, I feel a sense of accomplishment doing this one. Stupid fast new border. Five 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 fast episode. One dollar. So uh, yeah, I think uh, loudly means we wanted from my head from for me soon. Okay. In case you're wondering, uh, this is what a Swedish uh, ten dollar bill looks like. I'm not uh, trying to uh, signal high status. I'm I'm low status financially. I'm a disability. Okay. Uh, but this is a uh, ten dollar bill. What it looks like. In case somebody's curious, what Swedish money looks like, and they changed a few years ago. I had it on the counter because I pulled out of my pocket when I emptied my popcorn. And it's blue. It's a 100 crowns, approximately 10 US dollars. And they have pictures of different people on here. Uh, different face and different. This looks like a view of Stockholm, capital of Sweden. Now I see it better with the naked eye than with the camera I show. I don't know if this is real gold or, or just symbolic but it's a movie roll that you cut actually it's the type of old time movie thing where you cut it that's like literally now you say it like you cut it trim and cut i've tried to keep trim and cut youtube video i'm coming up in this world i have trimmed and cut youtube videos okay um <laughs> and uh, but in old times they would have like roll or tape kind of like similar to the 90s the cameras we had was rolls and you have to give them to the photoshop and develop them like actual physical film uh and they're showing you that here in the old times you have the roll of film and when they want to cut out the scene or something they have to physically cut out the part of the roll precisely and that's there okay and then this is a, a two dollar bill this is Selma Lagerlöf and this is a book, so this has something gold color on each of them and this is a book that's called that, she's an author Swedish uh, childhood author Pippi Longstocking, she wrote that um, yeah, and there's Pippi Longstockings right there next to the author so the, cr the creator next to the creation and uh, books Ingmar Bergman is one of the Swedish director I don't remember which one it is, if it's the five dollar bill or five hundred. Let's see what it is, what it is. Yeah, anyway, that's the point. Um, and while we're at it, this is uh, uh, half a dollar. Okay, I like the old money more. That they had when I grew up when I was a kid. The one crowns, the ten crowns. They still had the ten crowns the same one. You can find some that says 1991. What is the one? Um, so they're gone out of commission, so I can't pay them. Then if they had a treasure buried in the forest with the in gold coins, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to <laughs> to buy things with it. Anyway, so uh, yeah, decoding movies. There's satanic symbol in there. Okay. Now I don't care if some of these people like Freemasons don't identify as satanic Satanists. You have some people who are Christians in the uh, like porch masons or whatever Freemasons especially. I think that the higher up you get in the organization the more aware you might become about the true nature of things. Possibly. And maybe they keep some types of people from ascending to some levels. But uh, anyway. Uh, it's a satanic agenda. The masons are not end all be all, but they, they, they're part of the world system, satanic hierarchy. And uh, you can see all kinds of symbology in 9 11. It was a satanic murder sacrifice ritual. They murdered people as some kind of ritual. Then they used this to, to birth or change. And I've heard from New World researchers, sometimes I doubt it, like I go, like maybe that's not true. But it makes sense that they believe that when they do this thing, what they warn about things going to do is like dissolve or absolves them from karmic debt, or like it makes them less guilty because they warn people ahead of time. So it's like when it's time before God, 
and all men will give account for the deeds done in the body. Well, they, they will stand before God in judgment. And they said, well, we warned them ahead of time. You murdered them. We, we warned them ahead of time. They could have figured it out. Something like that. Um, why else would they do? Why else would they do? Maybe it's some kind of spiritual law. If they don't give enough hints that somebody could figure out and they keep it covered up, God will blow the whistle. God will like blow it. I don't know. If it gets too wicked and they're doing too evil things, and you see all the power they have to make people defenseless against it, maybe God will be like, I've had enough of your crap with that. I'm going to make sure this gets exposed. Or something like that. I don't think it will be impossible. I don't know. I, there's some things I don't know. I know the unknowns, uncertainties. But definitely, some of them have to believe this thing. Some of them, the higher people believe that, yeah, we're, we're not that bad because we warned them ahead of time. Some other people might have some other view. Um, anyway, so Die Hard always, I've seen foreshadowed on 9 11 in there. Die Hard, uh, always, airplane movie, fire, fire, fire fighting airplanes. Um, the Holy Spirit was helping fight the plane. Okay. That's another deep part of it, but that's like a private detail that I care with you. That's like the detail of the detail. That's not about 9-11. That's like we call things to the root spiritual. It's like he's got a, there's a dead guy in the movie called the Claw. Somebody died like a pilot and he's somehow like guiding a ghost, this guy being the guy, in the, when he's going through hard things. And I think the devil, he will be symbolizing a Christian that has the Holy Ghost, aka the Holy Spirit, uh, like guiding him, helping him along, something like that. Uh, maybe it's even like a reference to they know that some people like Christians have the spiritual ability to decode the world system because they have the Holy Spirit in them. Maybe that's what it is. That it's like, because the movie, like the theme is like foreshadowing 9 11 or other that. And there's some, uh, like a part of the frog is a, a ghost that's helping the guy drive his airplane and, and stuff to figure things out how to do things. <laughs> and uh, maybe it could be like they, they know the Masons will have it. They know that Christians have been given like the ability to see the world as it is, like meaning the matrix, you wake up like a matrix and you see the world as it is. Maybe know that the most likely candidates to be able to figure this type of stuff out are gonna be people that are saying like real Christians. I don't know, could be. Anyway, I gotta finish up pretty soon. I'm happy that I could find this error rat canning factory to make the juice. No sugar in this. So this is something that I can actually use when I pour me it out to see it tomorrow. Uh, Ingredients, two ingredients, tomato and salt. And uh, carbs, 3.7 to 4 grams per 100 milliliter. GM candy. Okay. Barcode number 48500238048. You have a six, you have something for long, sorry. 666 is according to barcodes. It's a mark on bottles and it's got 666 on it. Okay, they, they put this mark, I'm sure you know that, barcodes and bottles and labels. It's a mark, okay, they, they mark them. And there's a 246, and you could look at like 666. Like the ones that protrude more than the others. Two lines, 246. And then uh, the phone number, interesting enough, is to the company to contact them. S s s I'm not gonna say it, but do like the movie thing, 555. Maybe somebody call it. Uh, it ends in 6666, the phone number to the company. I, I, well, I might already have it, so it's okay. That's not a deal or anything, I'm, I'm being kind. It's like this in the movie, movies, now I don't have the re reach to put the problem. Maybe I get some customers, <laughs> but, uh, that in movies, including Die Hard, when they got to dial a number in movies, they go like 555 five, five, because that makes whatever else comes after that not be an actual number. So it's like if some old lady has a number and then it happens to be in the movie, they buy this call, let's just call 2384 or something like this. And then people are watching and let's call the number and they call it and then it's, uh, somebody has to disconnect the phone or something. Uh, tomato juice. Ararat tomatoes coming from fresh pressed or the sun-moving tomatoes in the region of Ararat-Dalen. 
Sen är också naturligt utan tillsatser. Error at values går ju väldigt bra. Vad är det? Ja, I'm looking forward to breaking my fast. It's been a long day of fasting today. And uh, I've been exerting myself. Not too much. And I've recovered quickly. I came down with a, a cold the other day. Started making us warm and see. And my experience is started making us warm and see. If I get cold, I get sick. Uh, it's during the night where I'm not thinking warm and see. And it's something that I do like uh, wrong. Like I fall asleep with too much clothes in Sweden here. I'm sweating in my sleep. And then it's cold in the uh, room. I'm like, okay. It gets cold certain time of night. Colder. And then it, it rapidly cools your body and you get a cold. That's how that works. Like your chest failure, for example, your vital organ. So that's happened multiple times. I fall asleep with my water on my plate carrier. And it's it's like covering your chest. And if you sleep on your back, the, the sweat can't evaporate. And it gets trapped there. And then at a certain point of the night, you sweat in your sleep. Okay. And then I do. I'm an intense guy. I sweat in my bed at night when I'm sick. <laughs> and in my dreams, I chase monsters and I try to chase me like that. And anyway, um, <laughs> here's the point. I, and it traps the moisture. And then if you have liquid, like water, they yeah, use water cooling in computers because water is efficient and efficient medium element to use to cool things. It transfers heat better. Meaning if you have zero degree water, it cools your body more than zero degree air. Okay. The, the felt the effect. Like it, I'll give you really news. Like experience and what it feels like. Okay. It can vary on on, on uh, the humidity for example. So it's, uh, minus one degree can feel more in certain circumstances. More cooling effect. Anyway, here's the point. So that happened a few times where I fall asleep with my plate carrier on and I sweat in my bed, it gets cold during the night and I wake up and I have like a drenched in sweat, cold water and I'm coughing. I wake up coughing, okay, that persistent cough in your bowl. <laughs> it's like, <coughs> okay, it won't stop coughing. And uh, I start making also vitamin C. A lot of times it's like the coughing is done within like, like within an hour I start coughing. Like I feel like a lot less an hour. And it's like the same day I feel like I kicked the cold. It's like that's what's, uh, that is what a cold is. You're out camping, you walk around, you get wet socks, you fall asleep in your tent, you wake up coughing with a cold because you fell asleep with wet socks and you cool your body. That's a cold. It's a way to catch a cold. Okay. Uh, so that happened many times. I catch a cold a few days ago. A lot of times the same day I can feel like I kicked it. Depending on how good of a job I do with my supplementation. And that, that wasn't how it used to be when I was younger before I started making those runs, even as a younger person. Um, you'd be like, if you could catch something like a cold, you will feel off for a few days and your energy and you will feel like you can't exert yourself. But I've been on here pushing myself. And it's not like it's not that. I'm just a powder of vitamin C, okay? Uh, so yeah, that, that that's a, that's the thing about vitamin C. And I would also take maybe some extra vitamin D in the morning, actually, to support my immune system. That's what I would do. Uh, so that's my experience of my vitamin C. If I get sick, it's like, I'm doing something wrong. There's like some kind of extraordinary circumstances. And uh, I start making those vitamin C again, I, I, I quickly recover. Okay. And here's the thing. When I talked about this before, how I thought about this is good. Like I, sometimes I take a lipo C. I have taken lipo C at times before going to bed. And it, it could have some kind of time release effect more so than ascorbic acid in water and sodium ascorbate. And you're not taking vitamin C when you're sleeping for eight hours. And if you have a high draw vitamin C, you got a tooth infection, you got immune inflammation, you got allergies and this and that, your body will deplete the ascorbic acid quickly. So maybe three hours into your sleep, you're, you're kind of seriously deficient in vitamin C. And your immune system will, will be worse and you'll wake up with a cold. Um, so it's after not taking vitamin C for eight hours, I wake up coughing, given other circumstances, for example, like a perfect storm. So, uh, take a lipo C before bed could be a way maybe to uh, protect against that because uh, you get it before you sleep. Uh, whatever. What's the point? Vitamin C is good.
that God's medicine. This will be getting is God's medicine. I'm gonna finish up the mission. Nothing I say in this video is to be taken as medical advice information. If you have a health problem, you go to a doctor. If you have a mental health problem, go to a psychologist. It's not kind of licensed healthcare profession. Okay. So. <laughs> <coughs> And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to disclaimers. I have to up my disclaimer games a bit. Same with me too. I don't even know what I'm doing this game for sometimes. I uh, it was do the mission, throwing some disclaimers here, but that's the point. Um, yeah, so Die Hard, I like the movie. It's a good movie. I like classic movies. I like that. I like Die Hard. I'm a one thing type of guy. One movie, I can watch the same movie 20 times. I find a good movie and I watch the same movie. Some people like that with series. Um, yeah, it's a good movie. It's got four shots. It's good from a technical, not a moral perspective. Because if the scene is good, things that it contains plans or murder in there. Morally, it's not good. Anyway, here's the point. Um, is there something else I've seen? I might have to watch again sometimes. Maybe I'll watch tonight since when I want to break my fast. If I see something more, who knows? Yeah, you have to protect yourself. If you're in a war, you have to fight, okay? You have to know you're in a war if you're in a war. And the same as I'm waging a war on humanity. There's a war on your mind, as Eric Sean says. Now, I've shared my suspicions of him being a control position agent. Okay, but uh, of course he's gonna, even if he was fake, it's not like, well, why would he give good information to information, like uh, if he is a fake, he would have to do that, or nobody would accept him as what he is, you have to be kind of similar to two, what, the real dollar bill, if you're gonna pass your fault, that's what, I get kind of it, um, but yeah, he, he talked about there's a war for your mind, there is a war for your mind, and it's for your body. And these things are working together. So the softening thing, sugar softens your mind. The Dr. Berger videos about that. Uh, how sugar like makes you have brain fog type confusion effect. Like it make it lowers the quality of your mind, your consciousness, and uh, it steals energy from you. Okay, you lose energy. Short term, you might feel energy, but uh, you will crash. Softens your mind. So if a guy is a hard opponent in chess and starts eating sugar, it will soften. You. He'll be the opposite of a hard opponent to beat. Or less of a hard opponent to eat if he eats enough sugar because it will, it will decrease the quality of his mind um, maybe short term like right after you eat it it will kind of like supercharge your brain or something like this um, but after a while you're going to crash and it's going to be worse similar to the blood sugar you get more energy short term from eating sugar but then after the, the blood sugar curve goes down like the bell curve it gets lower than it was before you ate the sugar. Um, I'm glad I quit sugar. I think God might have gotten the message to me. God has been uh, giving me good health advice. Okay, like he did to the Jews. If you want to understand things, you don't like disregard. I'm not a Jew, I'm not going to read the Old Testament. That would be foolish. Yeah, you can learn about how God works in your life as a Christian and your Christian walk you walk as a Christian by studying how God would double the Jews because God's character is if he has a son this is how he raises his child now the Jews were his children if you're a Gentile and you're a believer you're also a child of God see so if you have this father you, his character is to be a certain type of father okay and it's going to deal with his children as many as I love I rebuke and chase them chase them be zealous therefore and repent as many as I love, loved of God, beloved, okay? So you are accepting the beloved. You are, you are a Christian, if you're a Christian. You are loved by God. For God so loved the world, you, you get saved by the love of God. And it's the love of God that keeps you saved. And uh, you, you, are, you are in the beloved. Okay, so these epistles where they address Christians as beloved. Okay, beloved. Okay. That means God loves the person. And uh, so, okay, so you love by God, and God says you put the pieces together of the puzzle. Knowing this, 
another thing. As many as I love. Okay, you're beloved. Okay, as many as I love, which means you want to be beloved if you're a Christian. I do what to rebuke and chasten. Chasten is talk about discipline. Okay, meaning if you do the prodigal something, or Esau, for one more so meets all his birthright. Your birthright is like I've decoded this. This is the original insights. I didn't watch a sermon or commentary book on this because the Holy Spirit is my teacher and he can bring things to my remembrance, whatever he has taught me. Um, he's a decoder. In the 90s, when I grew up, they had like a digital box and you had a normal, like through the electrical grid TV channels kind of had to run thing. And then you could buy like a box, boxer, and uh, <laughs> You needed a card to insert into this machine to, to decode the channels. It's literally called a decode, the thing. It's literally called, because it's all this information being sent through the air, visuals and all the talk about sounds and stuff. Information is being broadcast through the air. It's in the living room, but you can't access it. You can't see it. You can't hear it. Okay. You need to decode the box and this insert into this card that looks like a credit card, kind of like a SIM card, like a big one. You put it in there. I think that was in heaven or the strips. Uh, chips and now you you have uh, enabled now you can uh, get access to all this information that is out there in the ether okay in the ether in the airways it's not physical matter things floating around in the room or it's it's in the in the, it's in the air okay uh, that's the holy spirit your body is the box that you have to insert this thing into um anyway what's the point here there's all kinds of points they want to soften you up and portal how they do that it should be okay that's off the up mentally physically and spiritually too because if you get drunk and you try to understand the bible okay if i will get crap face drunk and i gotta go do a bible study and see what the truth of scripture how well do you think that will play out with me maybe i could get some things and god being gracious but i give it more grace so i'll go stuff like this but uh, confess the sin of drunkenness while still being drunk. Maybe he'll have some grace to me that we understand some things that you kind of stop drinking or whatever. But uh, in, in general, it's like it's not conducive to uh, understand spiritual things if you get, do things like uh, that decrease your quality of consciousness. You don't want to over spiritualize or, or, or over physicalize things. Okay. But it, it will hurt your spiritual walk if you break down your body. If you hurt the organ of your brain that's used to uh, process and retain information, you're not going to be as good at, at reading it. Okay? There's things you can do while you're warm up that you can feel it. God can help you, but it's like you don't want to like push the push the limit. Okay? How much can I damage my brain and still be able to understand the Bible with God's help? Something like this. Okay. Um, so yeah, sugar is something that will hurt you across the board, and that is really one of the biggest things. It's like the, the simple thing. Okay. The, the big part of my decode takes you back to two powders that are opposites, exact opposites. So you have a lot of opposites in this world, that's not a decode key. Look at opposites. If you find something that would be an opposite to it, if it's a powerful positive, it would be a powerful negative to it. The opposite dynamic of cause and effect nature um, working um, effect. That's it, right? um, so, so you have a white crystal powder called sugar. What is this thing? It's toxic. It's a drug. It's addictive. That's baked into being a drug. Um, it's anti-sobering. Okay, if you watch the talk of the Eric Burr video, but it makes your mind be unclear. Okay, that's an anti-sobering effect. Okay, it's an insobriety, insobriety causing agent to some effect. It's different types. So it's a drug. It's toxic, pro-inflammatory. If you have an inflammation problem, like pain in the shoulder after an exercise, you eat sugar. It will make it worse if you eat enough of it. So it's pro-inflammatory, it's a toxin, and it's addictive, a drug, okay? It makes your mind work worse. It makes allergies worse, asthma worse, if you consume sugar. And this is by experience, not just research. Vitamin C is the exact opposite effect. So sugar kills, it's a toxin that hurts the human body, breaks it down, including your teeth. Vitamin C is the exact opposite in all these different things I just listed effects, the exact opposite, okay? So like sugar, toxin, vitamin C, antitoxin. Sugar causes inflammation, vitamin C lowers inflammation. Sugar prooxidant, vitamin C antioxidant. Uh, sugar, anti-sobering, vitamin C sobering. Um, vitamin C sharpens your mind. It, it's good for mental clarity. Um, 
ascorbic acid is one of the smallest antioxidants. It can cause a blood brain barrier at ease. It, 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 it's good for it, system wide distribution, saturation in the body. It can get to places where some other antioxidants might not be able to go because of like how small it is. Um, okay. Uh, cross blood brain barrier. So if you have toxins in your brain or something causes inflammation in your brain, you want to get the anti inflammation thing into the organ that suffers inflammation. It's like you have the fire here, you need the fire truck to be able to go there to access the fire. Okay. Start doing its work. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Vitamin C sp uh, slows down healing. No, slows down aging. Speeds up healing. Uh, retards disease progress. Uh, sugar speeds it up. Sugar makes you have the disease, it's gonna make you sicker if you eat a lot of sugar. Um, f it makes you age faster. It gives you worse skin eating a lot of sugar. Vitamin C gives you better skin. It's like whatever thing I look at as a significant effect of vitamin C, sugar will be the exact opposite effect. So it's the two snakes the Pharaoh Egyptians snake, that uh, Exodus 7 11. Okay, that's the Pharaoh snake. That's the big pharma meds, okay? And vitamin C is the uh, most inerrant snake. It, it's God's snake. You have one good snake, one bad snake, one toxic snake that bit the juice in the woman's tail perishing from physical toxic venom. And then there was another snake that was the solution to it, okay? So that's, that, I'm not saying that the verse is about vitamin C primarily, but it is patterns to reality. God is a God of detail, order, and patterns. And there are patterns to this reality. It's not like the primary doctrine of this about Moses and Aaron and what happened to Jesus. It's about vitamin C and sugar. I'm not saying that. Okay. But that's, and some people have come against like Ed's followers. I don't like how Mike says vitamin C is Jesus Christ because it's so close minded. They have the horse blinders on. And I can see more than they do. And it's, I don't know if it's like intimidating or scary to them or something that there's some kind of deep rooted thing that is like things that are real in the Bible that they can't see and they have to listen to a guy preparing the commentary books to get something, some truth, okay? Uh, then somebody's out here with the Holy Spirit like wildly figuring the world out to the core of, okay? And they don't have this ability. Maybe they're not saved. I don't know what the, the insecurity is, but a lot of times there'll be toxicity with this kind of insecurity. Anyway, here's the point. Um, I don't like how much is, I never said that Kathy Newman. Deborah Gill. I said vitamin C is a type shadow figure of Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, a physical type. It'd be like if I talk about how uh, a white blemish less spotless lamb is a type, a shadow, a figure of Lord Jesus Christ. And then if that was something that was in common knowledge in, in, among Christians, and I was the guy who like saw that in the Bible and told people. I guess that she would be like, I don't like how Mike calls Jesus a sheep, okay? I don't like how he calls Jesus a sheep. She wrote this in a comment, I don't like my Ed Vol. I don't like how Mike says, I'm Jesus, is Jesus, the Kathy Newman, so what you're saying is, I'm not saying that, <laughs> okay? Don't put words in my mouth, okay? It's a type shadow of you, Isaiah 53, the Lord has laid on in the, as a sheep, okay? Uh, uh, the Old Testament sacrifice of sheep without spot and blemish. That's a type of Jesus' sinlessness. So the black spots on the sheep or whatever, some kind of a disfigurement, something that makes it not be a good specimen, unclean, it's like something wrong with it. Something wrong with it, okay? Some kind of genetic mutation or something. It's like, okay, some error. That's the type of sin. The rabbis would expect like the sheep. I, I, I think it was a male firstborn specifically. It's kind of that. And we, okay. A male sheep ran and they would sacrifice it. It would shed its blood for the sins of the person. There would be a, a spiritual, magical transfer of sins into the animal. And then there would be bloodshed on the animal. Sin, animals don't have sin. Okay. Animals don't have sin. God doesn't have commandments for animals. He does have some punishment for them. Like, kind of, if an oxen has been known to like, do something with his horn and then the owner doesn't do something about it, and then it hurts something, then you're gonna put a gun on top of it. Um, but the animals can't sin, okay? Um, they don't have sin, they don't have a sin nature. Um, so you have something that's sinless without sin, and the sins of a human is transferred into it. 
Okay, that's a type of, of salvation through Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Okay. Uh, the white spotless clothes lamb inspected by the rabbi to make sure, like a priest, to make sure that uh, he doesn't have anything wrong with him physically. It's a physical type, see. What was Jesus like? You gotta check him for birthmark or something like this before the cross. No, the, the, the physical defects that were not allowed, like there's something wrong with the animal, is what a physical error. Something like a birthmark, some black spot on it, it's supposed to be white. Okay, that's a symbol and a type of something else, a spiritual thing. Sinlessness, without error, without something wrong spiritually, without sin, Jesus Christ. Uh, the only begotten of the Father, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The world became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, he who knew no sin became sin for us. He knew no sin. You look inside Jesus, you find no sin in there. Okay, he became sin. You could look at it, I'm not saying this is how you should look at it, but you could look at it, I have looked at it, like a visual, like Jesus on the cross. It would, as if, like this thing that happened, like he would go like, and like sucking like a dark cloud, like all the sins of the world, like symbolized as a dark cloud of like black smoke above him. And he goes like, and that's all the sin of the world. And then God goes and kills him punishes him while he's carrying this inside of his body and he dies with this okay so it's like here's all the sins of the world being punished right now in jesus okay um it, it's a mental model that i've used like to, 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 to okay you could use that to explain it to somebody if they don't understand it but the holy spirit doesn't do somebody explain it to me. here's the point um yeah so okay i, I don't have to believe the point there are types and shadows and figures in this world. Okay, they, maybe it's hard for you to grasp certain people. Um, Cause I do want to be Debbie Downer on my, on my discovery over here. Okay, um, rain on my parade. Okay, um, but here's the point. Yeah, what I mean, see, is a type of shadow figure of Jesus Christ. Because if you look at I, I, I'm getting better at summarizing this and I'd spend three hours to get something across because I talk about it so many times but slowly but surely I, I take less time to get the point across. Here's the point. You have uh, Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ operates in the spiritual to solve man's mortal problem, the sin problem, to heal man from his spiritual sickness, disease, death, like how he operates in spiritual is how Vitamin C operates in the physical and I think it's the one object in reality that mirrors it the closest. I don't think if you drink sheep blood it will cure disease, okay? Um, but vitamin C, if you mix it into water, then you uh, you drink it, it will heal disease. It can heal disease. Um, it is, I do think it's the closest thing I found in the universe, in, in my deep hold uh, journeys, that it mirrors Christ, like an object, physical object. You have Jesus Christ, what does he do? A man has the same problem, he lacks a bit of his righteousness, that's man's problem. What is man's problem? He ha contains sin, that's to that's a type of physical toxins, okay? Toxins inside himself, they kill you. Uh, oxygen is trapped. Man has a sin problem, spiritually, and it leads to death. Spiritual death. Jesus, uh, and the problem is you have sin, you lack the ability to produce your own righteousness. Okay, inherent production, righteousness production, you lack that by a genetic lineage because you're born into a genetic line with the mutation of sin, as it were. You're born in the line of Adam and Eve. You can trace back the lineage of Adam and Eve. Something changed after the sin fall. Uh, so you, since then, since, since uh, the Garden of Eden, uh, the, the people have sin in them and lack the ability to produce righteousness. That would be like the anti the counterbalance. <laughs> Or something like this. It's like you have to have righteousness. Well, you have sin and you need something to uh, neutralize it. And uh, that's how RMC works. So Jesus Christ died sacrificial death for your sins on the cross to solve your sin problem. This is a toxin. Sin is a toxin. It's, it, it's something that kills you. This is death. Uh, And he sacrificed himself to neutralize this toxin of sin that, that is killing you. And he donates his righteousness to you. That's how vitamin C works. 
in the physical to save your life physically against uh, health problems like a snake venom for example the snake venom in the god of eden that scene being injected by the serpent in the god of eden is a snake venom biting them as it were metaphorically adam and eve injecting a snake venom of sin into them that that carries that has carried on for generations and uh, you need an anti-venom and that's lord jesus christ another snake sugar lime sea powder okay similar and uh, yeah, so basically, man likes to be to produce his own righteousness, has sin, will die as a result. Uh, Jesus has righteousness, lacks sins, lacks sin. He, he uh, sacrificed himself, neutralized the sin, and donates his righteousness. That's mutant vitamin C. In the physical, man has lost the ability due to gen genetic mutation to produce vitamin C, ascorbic acid, internally. In okay? Some animals have the ability. So if they get sick, their body starts producing more vitamin C, ramping up vitamin C production to counteract the disease inside of them. If I would have a goat hooked up to some kind of machine and like chain smoke and hold the cigarette on its mouth, you, and you ha had it hooked up to something, you could somehow tell it's producing more vitamin C in response to more toxins going to the body. body. The toxin exposure goes up, vitamin C production goes up to counterbalance it. The more toxins the animal gets, the more vitamin C it will produce in response to that. If it has a bacterial infection, viral, like the certain health problems, that if something is like stress in the animal, stress even, that it will start produce more vitamin C. Uh, the animals that have the ability to produce vitamin C, they will produce more vitamin C in response to stressors on the body, things that are hurting their body, okay? Um, man lacks this ability, and we are hopeless, because we can't produce it ourselves. But we lack the ability, we have toxin, the toxin I've seen, we lack the ability to produce, we have toxins on ourselves, we're breathing toxic air. If you don't smoke cigarettes, you're gonna breathe in the toxic stuff in there. You're gonna have toxic stuff going into your body. Heavy metals, all kinds of stuff gonna pick up in this world. And you lack the ability to, your body can't like, oh, we're detecting toxins in our body to produce more vitamin C. You can't do that, okay? Which why people are taking so much damage that don't counterbalance, uh, quote unquote, artificially, smoking cigarettes, vitamin C water, okay? Uh, because they're having toxic exposure and they're not upping their, uh, they're not putting vitamin C in them. That's mirroring man's ability, inability to produce righteousness to, to deal with neutralize the toxin with sin, to, to deal with sin, as sin lacks ability to produce righteousness. And uh, that leads to death. And man can't produce vitamin C, and you need to have it imputed onto you. Meaning, uh, so you have to have vitamin C in the external, put it inside of you. Okay? You can't produce it inside. That's mirrored in what Christianity teaches about salvation. If you have a problem, the toxin of sin wants to go inside of you. You lack the ability to produce righteousness, okay? You can't do it due to genetic mutation in the Garden of Eden. You're born in the line of Adam, okay? So th this is what I can see. It's, okay, this is like, I'm like Nikola Tesla. That would have, he said like, he didn't figure things out. His mind was a receiver and he tuned it to the right frequency. And the universe gave him inventions and insights and like he saw the machine in his mind. This is what my mind looks like, uh, where I'm not like trying to figure things out. There's been some some of that going on, like crunching, number crunching. But it's like it's it, it's a light that cuts into my consciousness. Okay, that that is uh, like a revelation. Okay, where I can see things, um, and that that comes from God, that ability. Anyway, here's the point. And I don't. I'm not saying I'm that special. Okay. Don't get the whole Bible manifest like that. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that all Christians uh, can can have the ability to perceive things beyond their, their current level of... of, of uh, they can see deeper than they what they're seeing right now. It just depends on, on uh, how you've been navigating life, how you've been utilizing your free will since you were born. Which is uh, the one thing that you have that, that determines your outcomes in life, your free will, how you use them, in big and small things. But uh, yeah, that's something that I've seen. It's, it's, and basically, that that makes it hard, a hard, hard not to call vitamin C God's medicine. Not anything that is medicinal, that's an herb that God created, or a vitamin or something. Something that is God created medicinal. Uh, not something that man cooked together with a novice, novice 
novice Olympic can retort more than Pesol and white powders and cake ingredients is a big pharma drug. That's man's creation, okay? Man's medicine. But God's medicine is like things that just grow out of the ground and God made them and they're medicinal. No intervention from man other than collecting it. Um, so if anything is created by God and it has medicinal effect, you can call it God's medicine. Okay. Now I would say that like the primary medicine, like the, the God's medicine would be ascorbic acid, vitamin C. Um, and I've also been held some, and it looks to me as if as the toxin, how much, like it's like, I, I can see it like it looks like if you zoom out with the world history, it looks to me as if, as it's like people could get by better on just citrus fruits. They were still deficient, but they were less deficient. It wasn't as serious of deficiency before they started having pe factories pumping out smoke and introducing lead paint and chemicals and plastics and petroleum products and all the other things that people have been doing for the rest of the world. Then the Middle Ages and all that is. People maybe could get by better on like juicing oranges and lemons. And they could have more of a medicinal effect from that. <coughs> After a while it's like it starts getting insufficient. And then time with when it's like starting to get close, it's like a hypothesis. Time when T time to when it starts getting close, we can no longer, it's like unsustainable that man can survive this world and have some healing effect on on only uh, unprocessed ascorbic acid inside of fruits and vegetables. Then somebody has an epiphany and discovers ascorbic acid, it knows him. He didn't know where it was until he discovered uh, ascorbic acid. It's like, I see, now we have pure concentrate form, it's more medicinal than source from what God created. And then a little bit later, you have a new form of C liposomal and uh, IVC. So it almost looks like like the antitoxin potency has been keeping pace with how toxic the world is. Like the daily toxins brought to the form of man, the average person. That's what I see. It looks as if like, like, the, like the hand of God kind of thing. Like the, the, the see, as if God is like, I saw a cute meat pick in back 2012, 13 something Facebook. That is like, there's no disease that God won't allow to exist without a cure or something like this. And some kind of inhuman meat picks or something like this. But okay. Uh, <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, I, I think there could be something to that. There's some kind of divine intervention. God goes like, people are not going to be able to survive, okay? Uh, only fruits and vegetables. They've been messing themselves up so much, poisoning the world so much. They're living so crazily, so much toxin and stuff. They can no longer get by on like the oranges and citrus fruits. Uh, and and uh, he gives somebody divine inspiration on how it really works. They make somebody uh, like discover ascorbic acid and how to extract and crystallize it and they can figure out they can use it for medicine. And then later on, you have a more potent form like IVCs. Like people figure out that IVs, um, they can use IVs, maybe not that long after. And then you have a liposomal vitamin C now, which is very important. Like a gram of liposomal one is maybe a equal in effect of 10 grams in IV or something like this. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things in this world. Bored my brain, be like, you can't hear. <laughs> we know your name. We gonna have win anyway. Right every single one. <laughs> right every one. That, 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 okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm, let's, let's finish on a strong note. Um, vitamin C uh, helps with everything. That's my view. Okay, I call it a help ball. Okay, I would think somebody's crazy if they call it a cure all, but I personally call it a help ball. Meaning, if you are, there's certain things it's not going to completely remove the problem, but it will help with anything, I believe. Any help problem you have will be better off if you stop being vitamin C deficient. It will be like if you're sick and you dehydrate at the same time, it's going to be worse if you be sick and you do better if you restore the uh, the water levels, okay, get there and dehydrate again. Uh, similar to that. So yeah, I'm going to finish up. I think we fell asleep. Uh, and I got a low battery warning, so it might be time to finish up. Uh, it's been a long live stream. I'm still fasting. I was cooking, but I had we on other day on the podcast. And I was uh, getting ready, I was thinking I'm going to cook the omad meal live. And we got started later than I had thought, like a three, four hours later. Uh, and then I was uh, washing stuff and I was like, going to start cooking. And I'm like, no, you know what, I'm not, I don't feel like it. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. And then I went downtown, I've been shopping. So, uh, I'm gonna eat a little bit later. I'm gonna hike up here now to Kilo Cycling. Which means I do maybe a month, two weeks, three weeks, a month of street kilo, less than 50 grams of carbs a day. And then I take a shorter uh, hike up here. Maybe it's three days a week, and maybe it's a week. At times I might have done it like two weeks. And I've loosened up on the uh, typically keto. I do all mad, sometimes two mad, one meal a day, or, or sometimes two two meals, typically all mad. 80 plus hours of testing. 80 plus meaning more than at least 80 or more. Um, and then uh, uh, on a rare occasion, do two mad. If I have been exercised a lot, I eat my mad meal, I get really say hungry. It's like a signal for my body, you need more protein or, or fat or something. So I might uh, switch to two mad at that point. Um, and I'm in a high cup right now, I started today. Um, no, yesterday. I bought some uh, sourdough bread before one of these. And I think it was yesterday, the day before that I ate them. I'm in a high cup here now. This is uh, Semper crisp bread with sourdough. Even says in English, you don't need to translate it. Gluten free, high fiber, lactose free, low food, FODMAP, low sugar. 330 grams, uh, keyhole malt, I don't remember what that means, these are just symbols, fair trade, this and that, new recipe, okay, vegan, who cares, whole grain <laughs> oats, they put some beef in there, I would like it, palm oil free, no added wheat starch, okay, good times, I gotta enjoy myself thoroughly tonight, dine like a king, I have, I'm gonna have a feast, okay, I've earned it, um, and uh, it's gonna be good. I, I, I don't jinx it, okay? So uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for today. And uh, I'm living inside this matrix, this video game, and I played it before. So listen to the lyrics and everything. I'm trying to get the caffeine under control. All right. Yeah, the, the, sometimes you realize it's ugly headed as well. Not more hundred hundred percent with the caffeine I had for today. I got real pissed. Anyway, here's the point. I'm gonna finish up to kill yourself out there. I'm Mike Sassy. Mike Sassy didn't change my name yet. Still live. Gonna end my live stream. Uh, uh, there are things in this world that, that uh, are. Uh, it's a perspective change. If you would see things different way, get saved out there. The Romans chapter 1 to 4. Uh, believe the gospel. And uh, you'll be safe. Okay, finally you'll be safe if you be desire to leave. I don't have to worry about going to hell and black and fire. Uh, and there's so, if you're lost, you probably have a nagging part of you. Or sometimes you feel fear about mortality. If you think about that or thought about it, you get an uneasy feeling. That's normal. That's not irrational cowardice. That's a rational fear. Okay, if you're not a Christian and you have fear of that, then you worry sometimes. And it's uneasy for you to think about that. That's a rational fear. It's not a coward. Okay, it's a rational fear. Um, and uh, you should act on it, okay? So look into uh, the scriptures and God will be speaking to you. Um, that's what I recommend. You do what you want with your people. If I respect your people, so do I. Um, I have a link. I'm going to drop the link, actually. I edited my uh, salvation collection of verses here. Well, that's the wrong book one. I'm gonna start adding. I'm gonna make an add-on. 316 to 20. I have a selection of verses that I put to compile into a link. So you just drop a link. I write salvation in the uh, description. Drop this link and people can click it. Okay, this is the new and improved. Now, don't get it wrong, it's not that it was insufficient to save anybody before. The link that says salvation, click this, and if somebody reads that, they, they get shown what they need to get saved. But it's like optimization, it's like if it doesn't hurt, so it doesn't hurt, and it might be helpful to add a few other verses. I mean, you could just go Romans chapter 1 to 4, and the Holy Spirit working through the scriptures, Romans chapter 1 to 4 could. Uh, get somebody saved 
but I like to add uh, one cost weakness three to four at sixty thirty thirty one efficient trade line and also the warning being the only consequence of not getting say more you say from Revelation twenty fifteen and who sells not found with me but life of scarcity break a fight in Revelation twenty one eight. But the fear of an unbelieving and unborn abominable and hormone sorcerers uh, adult of all liars, a workplace crazy person would be like if I don't stop lying I will go to the lake of fire if I do this. I have to stop lying because liars will be cast into the lake of fire. And okay. And I can't be a homeowner or I can't live because then I go to lake of fire. It can seem to the, like that to a corner person. But it's teaches me it's still, you're still being dealt with as a, for your sins at that point. People end up they gotta be looking at what they are, okay? And he'll be seeing their sins. He won't be seeing God's righteousness. Okay. God's righteousness if you if you show, if you believe the gospel and God looks at you, he will see God's Jesus righteousness that's been imputed to and given to you. And he won't be seeing like, yeah, I'm going to cast the guy into the lake of fire. Here's all the sins he's committed. He's got a lot of sins. And one will be enough. He's got sin. He's a sinner. He lacks righteousness. He's going to go to hell with you. So God sees you uh, lake of fire. in your sins. Okay. But if you get saved, God looks at his, his Christ's righteousness that's been given to you. So you're not dealt with eternally for, for, about where you're going anymore, for your sins anymore. For your rewards as a Christian. How good heaven is going to be for you. Uh, but so the people end up in Revelation 21 8. The, they are people who haven't gotten God's righteousness and imputed unto them Christ's righteousness. So if, when God looks at them, he sees the, their sins. Sins. Like adulterers, liars, homeowners, this and that. Different sins that he needs to. Um, so that's the problem. I know some workspace crazy people who, they are people who be like, they, they believe in this, they rest the scriptures, this scripture as they do other scriptures on their destruct, destruction. And they go, they say they're going to hell because they were wrong with God's religion. That's one way they, they cause destruction to themselves. And uh, they go, oh, look, all liars go to lake of fire. If I ever, li if I lie again, I have to stop lying. I can never lie again because if I, li if I lie, I might go to lake of fire. No, no, no. Your sins don't sell to send you to hell. It's a lack of righteousness. Everybody sins all the time. But God will not count you as a sinner if you have been given uh, Christ's righteousness. So yeah, um, as an ambassador of Christ, I beseech you as the Christ uh, in, in my stand for this, uh, be you reconciled unto God before it is too late. Okay, I'm not trying to like scare you or something like this, but it's like it, it is a thing to a serious matter to, to consider. We're going to spend the time with. Let's go beyond the license and take care of so Thanks for watching. And uh, why do I thank you for watching? I'm delivering you. I'm, help, I'm, I'm giving you the license. I'm not taking you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Let's go beyond the license and take care of so Thanks for watching. Bye.